Welcome. Hey, welcome to the new meta episode 75. 70 mother fluffin' five. Uh, I'm coming to you from, from uh, Denver, um, where I've been stranded for the last two days. Yeah, dude. Like, no, just to totally kidding. Just like home. fly the plane, forehead. Yeah, should have. You know, you sound so we'll get into a that. little sick. Yeah, I am, man. I got. Um, I'm gonna call it the <laughs> BlizzCon cooties. That's what I've been dubbing it. Um, I got some BlizzCon cooties, man. I think a lot of people did. But yeah, Muggle Mala. I, I Is she sick too? No, just she's got cooties. Oh, obviously, oh, God damn, I'm toxic. <laughs> So, oh my God. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Of, oh my God. There's a lot of people that, um, that ended up getting sick, but I started feeling sick like Sunday, Sunday night, and then Monday, um, and then I flow back sick yesterday. So I'm getting over. I'm better today than I was yesterday. It's good. So, good. Good for you, bud. Mm -hmm. Plus con cooties, man. Yeah. They got me. There's no recent or upcoming oh my games God. for team at this Computer, time. stop. Why on earth? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so we got back from blizzcon we had a good time uh those of you guys tuning in probably already know but we went and we went to yeah. blizzcon it yeah. was an awesome thing it was um, we did have we did have the poll from last week before we'd like totally derail let's see yeah i kind of forgot what we had asked i will pull it okay. up right now Three. let's let's do it let's talk about this and Two. then we'll just blizzcon it up for the next four hours you know yeah so last week or yeah last week we asked which seasonal theme has been the best? And let me just uh, paste it in chat so you guys can vote one last time. Yeah. Um, you got a couple seconds. <coughs> which seasonal theme has been the best? Uh, obviously, free Legacy Nightmare Season, free Ring of World Grander Season, Double Goblins, Double Bounty Mats, Season of Triune, and PTR Killstreak. What do you think won? And what would you vote? Uh, PTR Killstreak, and I think that's also what won. I really? Think, I think every season they've stepped it up a little bit. Uh, yeah. What mm. do you think? You think it's going to be for, free Royal Ring? Uh, <laughs> free Legacy of Nightmares? I mean, okay, so we had a podcast like weeks and weeks and weeks ago where someone just like pulled the numbers to their website traffic and judged uh, popularity based on that. And based on that, Rorg was the most popular. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, uh, I guess I kind of agree. It's either Lawn or Rorg for me. Um, okay. I'll go Rourke. Rourke? Results. All right, let's see what we got. Boom. Rorg. 42% of the vote said Rorg. 20% uh, of the vote said Free Legacy of Nightmares. 15% of the vote said PTR Killstreak, even though it hasn't happened yet. 10% of Bounty mm -hmm. Mets. 8% uh, Double Goblins. And 4% Season of Triune. That's surprising. That it actually the is. lowest to me. I'm gonna. I would like to revisit this after this next season because I feel like a lot of people didn't actually play the PTR kill streak thing. Mm. So w w I like to see if that legacy of nightmares or, or royal ring still hold true. True next season, but uh, I'm surprised that royal ring was so high. That's cool. You know, cool. while we're on the subject of the kill streak season, uh, we got some news at BlizzCon. Yeah. So. Uh, the, the, the PTR seasonal theme, the Killstreak season, as we knew it on PTR, is not going forward mm -hmm. as it is. Uh, you know, yeah. we're not going to have an RGK uh, Angels. <laughs> uh, you're not going to be you're not going to be farming 15 kill kill streaks to you know basically kill your elites or second like some tanky build that just tries to get the 15 kill streak. Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of knew that was going to be the case. Yeah, you know, those were really just strong. It was strong, and it was play around numbers. I, you know, it yeah. makes sense to me that they're not going to go live. But yeah, I'm not surprised at all by sure. that. Sure. So. And according to the conversations we had, they, I mean, they seem to be pretty pleased with whatever they thought of to replace it. Um, but yeah, uh, they also are replacing the one K kill streak, and they did not. They would not give us any details. They would not mm -hmm. give us any juice. No juice on the one K. We'll have to see what it what it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, I, clearly you have to farm it. And uh, I, I don't think it's even possible to get it in a greater room. Yeah, I don't not. even think there's a thousand mobs. Unless you like farm room. mobs that like summon, but that'd be so stupid. <laughs> yeah. So, which is uh, fine. It's there for like a, you know, it's, a, it's an Easter egg kind of a thing. Sure. So, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me pull up, actually. And then next week's poll, we're going to hit up later. A little bit later. Yeah. A little bit later. So if you guys 
are curious to see what we're going to have for next week, you got to stick it through the rest of the podcast. Yeah, we're going to talk about that some a little bit later. Um, so, but yeah, let's let's dive just a little bit. So we we don't have too much Diablo three stuff to talk about. Obviously, we were at BlizzCon, and honestly, you know, for me and Peachell knows this already, but to me, like one of the highlights of BlizzCon for me was like talking with the Diablo three team. Uh, we were able to meet a few of the guys that work on the team, and like that was dope. That was super dope. Yeah. Uh, that, that was, was actually one yeah. of my favorite things too. 100%. I think it's my favorite thing. Period. Just talking to the guys and it was dope. Um, but as part of that, like we honestly just went, like went down there, just like meet up and talk. And then as we we're like walking away, they're like, "Oh hey, uh, you know the changes post PTR are up on that PlayStation uh, <laughs> on the Diablo three demo." Uh, we're like, mm-hmm. Fuck. And so like me, it was me, Bloodshed, and. And Peach Out, and we like, you know, like basically sprinted over there. Um, and we're like, oh, we gotta like, let's tweet these out. Like, this is gonna be Pog, right? And none, none of us, <laughs> none of us had ever played console except Bloodshed, right? And so we sit down at this PlayStation Four, right? And like nobody's there. There wasn't a line. Yeah, like right. it was just sitting there. Nobody's playing it. And we sit down, and and we all pick a controller up, and then we're kind of figuring out how this works. And Blood's like, I've never played co-op with anybody. I always play solo. So we're like, fuck it, here. We quit and give the controllers to Blood, and we're like, let's let's look at the new sets. And so Blood couldn't remember how to scroll down on the equipment. Right. We didn't know how to scroll down on True. the equipment. We literally took like 10 minutes <laughs> to try to scroll down to read the set bonuses on the gear. That's how console noob we all are. Um, it was yeah. kind of pathetic it was bad. and funny it at took the same us, yeah, time. Yeah, we were all cracking up. We were having a great time laughing right. at our stupidity. <laughs> So, uh, but then we decided, you know, okay, uh, you know, just because we're like getting leaks out there, basically, it's like, well, let's all take like a photo of one thing that changed, right? And so, Peach Out ended up taking a photo of like the monk set, tweets it out. Bloodshed takes a photo of the Crusader set, tweets it out. And that leaves me with the nerf. I drew the short end of the <laughs> stick somehow. Um, yeah. And it's been uh, an interesting experience because because I've tweeted that out. And, and part of that tweet, I said, uh, let's see if I can pull it up. So I tweeted it out and I said, uh, small nerf to 2.6.7 whirlwind barb. And I have been actually spammed with with hate mail from the barbarian <laughs> community, uh, which is just fucking crazy to me. Because one, they actually think that I had something to do with the nerf. Which is... <laughs> I mean, you you did though. <laughs> You sat oh, down shit. at the dev station and took it away yourself. Yeah, yeah they finally gave me access to the repository, and I went in there. I was like, the first yeah. thing I'm going to do. Yeah, I, I didn't even look at Necro, right? If they gave me access to the repo, yeah. I'm like, nah, I don't really make changes You're like, I'm not going to buff any Necro stuff. I'm going <laughs> to just fuck Whirlwind Barbs as hard as I can. Yeah. That, was, that was your goal. That was and and you goal. thought if you took the multiplier off that. No, this this is not like, this is like a uh, six to seven greater rift drop from what... Uh, the devs told us this is what they think. They think that it's going to put them right in line with the top clearing classes. And without this, man, Barb would have been by far the strongest solo clearing class in the game. Uh, I wouldn't look into the math too much. So, like, a lot of rhetoric on the Barbarian forums is like, oh, it's a 6 to 7 GR nerf. Uh, I think it's hard to gauge that with uh, Rend in particular. Um, so I wouldn't really buy into that like rhetoric. I, I I tweeted it out saying small nerf because to me, you know, and and I'd say a good amount of my audience, I'm talking to like the people that are like you know the one percenters, the people that are going to be able to play Barb like to the max of their ability. I mm-hmm. think I I kind of believe still that World and Barb will be like rank one, period, like across all classes. Yeah. Even with because you yeah. look at like people were doing with Whirlwind already before they added Ren to the six piece bonus. It was already insane. So now we have Rend on it. It's like, there's no way it's not going to be just like juicy AF. So, yeah, the only thing that I hope that I I really want to see some metas with Whirlwind Barbs, speed metas for Paragon farming. Sure. uh, Just to break the monotony of rats, because rats are still probably like the most super (laughs) efficient thing for a long time. And I really wouldn't like to see that at least be competitive. And I, I think it still will be. Uh, but with the changes to the belt, that's my only fear. My only fear is that it's still going to be a lot stronger to run rats than to do whirlwind. Sure. Um, so I hope that's not. The thing. Yeah. Uh, and so. so you know, I get it. You know, I, I understand the bar community like as a whole. 
Like I was in a bar of Maine, so I feel it, man. Like I understand you guys are pissed off because everyone wanted to run like speed run solo, like 105s, like without even breaking a sweat and just hold right click. I get it. But yeah. I actually had zero <laughs> to do with this, which is just comical almost. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so, you know, there were some changes. We didn't even find all of the changes that were in there. It's um, not a your home setup environment where you right. just have hours to poke through things and, and dig around. And mm -hmm. on top of that, it's on console, which I don't have a lot of experience with. None of us really were super crazy sure. experience with it. So they and removed the damage mod on Lamentation. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. this is Pete Child's Twitter. So they changed the sweeping wind set. Yep. Uh, which is good. Um, they, they did pretty much exactly what we wanted them to do. They added Tempest Rush damage reduction. Yes. Tempest Rush gives you spirit uh, generation so you can like infinitely channel it. Yep. Sweeping wind's going to get big, you know, as soon as it hits anything. Yeah, it was significantly bigger. I mean, it's, it's a great, it's a great adjustment. So my concern so hitting with sweeping wind, the new six piece bonus says hitting with tempest rush while sweeping wind is active increases the size of sweeping wind and also increases all damage dealt by fifty thousand percent. It changes all damage is the right, big right. keyword there. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you have to and all damage mod are dangerous, but yeah, uh, you have okay. to hit with sweeping wind. I don't, I don't know how that's gonna play. Like if you're gonna be able to like manipulate other skills and abilities to right to just do something nasty that they didn't intend. They did not intend, I don't think, for this to be like, oh, there's a hidden gem ability out there that you can use in conjunction with this, and it's going to be ridiculous. Sure. Is there one? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I hope there's no, like, I don't know, like a stutter effect where, like, you know, with, like, hexing pants, there's, like, that yeah. stagger. Yeah. I hope there's no, like, weird stagger with this where you can, like, basically run Wave of Light as long as you, like, move first. And so monks run, <laughs> right. like, yet another yeah. form of wave of light. Uh, yeah. That would feel really bad. That would monks. be bad. That would not be the intention, <laughs> I promise, if yeah. that were the case. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll and see then what happens with that. Super Pog, Bloodshed's tweet, where they uh, they basically uh, changed the, uh, the, the, just, or the Valor set from the Crusader to be amazing and exactly what I hoped for, which was basically to... Uh, Buff Heaven's Fury as well as Fist of Heaven's. Mm -hmm. um, right. Did we get the two piece on here somewhere? Somewhere. Come on, come on. Yeah. So they changed the two piece entirely. So it's no longer that weird internal cooldown and the bolts will spawn like another Fist of Heaven's. So now two piece yeah. reads attacking with Fist of Heaven's empowers you, allowing Heaven's Fury to deal 100% increased damage for five seconds, stacking up to three times multiplicatively. Mm -hmm. Huge uh, difference. Four piece, uh, hitting with Fist of Heavens, returns five wrath and reduces damage taken by 1% for 10 seconds, second up to 50 times. So they added a uh, wrath uh, return on it, which is really, really nice. Uh, and then finally, the six piece, um, somewhere, <laughs> oh, 20, increase the damage of Fist of Heavens and Heaven's Fury by 20,000%, which is insane. Uh, That's a lot. Yeah. And then they actually changed Dark Light as well mm -hmm. uh, to be a up to 1,000% damage mod on Fist of Heavens, which is yeah. nuts. So, so that, like yeah. getting that weapon, I think it's a level 34 weapon through Kadala. Uh, that would be <laughs> GG for leveling. There's going to be some sick things I think we're going to see with this Crusader set. Yeah. So uh, it's it's going to be fun. Yeah, man. I, um, this could maybe be broken. We'll see. It could be. It looks... This could be super strong. But, you know, uh, it's been a while since Crusader has been... I would love to see Crusader, it, like... It'd be fun yeah. to have it broken for a season. Sure. So we'll see. We'll see how it ends up playing. But I love that they added Heaven's Fury to this. I think it's... It, it's A, it fits the theme of the set. And yep. B, like, like finally using the other runes on, on the... And it just looks amazing. Yeah. Like, this set, visually, is... It looks insane. It's One so of the cool. most appealing sets in the game right yeah. now. So... Yeah, I'm actually like, super sad that I'm going to be missed, like, the first three weeks of the season. Because I really wanted yeah. to play this. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, so, speaking of missing the season. No, no, no. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> oh, I want to go there already. Uh, so, the big thing here is, you know, so we allude to, like, uh, it'd be cool if, if, if Crusaders got their time in the spotlight, and maybe even for group mm -hmm. play, because the other big thing that's coming is Bazooka's getting nerfed. Yeah. So, Bazooka is not going to be a thing. 
for four man. So hopefully that brings the GR capability down. I know Star Pack will still be very strong, but Bazooka they I, they figured out what the bug. There was like a bug, and SVR reported it, and uh, they were able to figure it out and fix it apparently. So Bazooka. yeah, it's kind of it's it's kind of always been not intended. It's right. a glitch in mechanical systems, like the way it's working, and they fixed the glitch, and so. It's supposed to kill it. Yep. Um, we'll see. You know, we'll see if it's actually fixed. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. We'll see. Right. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, especially apparently, if you're people have players. been breaking down maths and they're thinking that the thorns in Necro may not be enough to finish it off either. Mm. That it still might maybe potentially be viable. Sure. So that'd be that'd be unfortunate if that's the actual case. But yeah, we'll see. As long as it's like nerfed. You know, like it can still be RGK, like it's fine. But again, the four man meta, the the huge offender wasn't necessarily the thorns, except for if you got blighter. But anyway, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that was pretty juicy information that we none of us really expected uh, to see. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it was super dope getting to talk to those guys. And uh, you know, I was trying to sneak in as as much necker suggestions as I could, <laughs> and they were just kind of like <laughs> laughing at me. Uh, but they're a really fun group of guys, honestly. Yeah. Um, they, uh... Go ahead. Oh, go, uh, did you have more? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. we, we made a bet. I'm going to go back to this okay. real quick. Okay. We talked about on the last podcast. Yeah, yeah. Th that if they would or wouldn't talk about Immortal. Sure. On the main stage. For real. And I was like, absolutely not. They're not going to talk about it. Yeah. So the bet ended up being, would. yes, if they talk about it for more than 60 seconds, one of us would have to solo level a Wish Doctor on Hardcore on at least mm -hmm. Hard Mode. Um, mm -hmm. And sure enough, BlizzCon comes around, they didn't talk about it. Did didn't, not talk about didn't it. Even, not a single second. Not even a breath. Not even, you wouldn't even know the game existed. <laughs> so how's that Necro going, buddy? Uh, Necro goes great, but the Witch Doctor is sucking ass. That's what I meant. Ass. That's what I meant. Right. So uh, you yeah. ripped already? Yeah, so I, I booted it up, and I immediately went in. I was like, oh, cool, I got a cow level. And I was, like, looking over at chat, and I guess a lightning pulse just, like, fucking smoked me in the face. I, that Witch Doctor was alive for no longer than 20 seconds. <laughs> Didn't you have to wear a dress <laughs> while you did it, though? No. I, chat, I need some confirmation. Yeah. On the dress. We're going to go back. Somebody go clip that that episode. We'll I actually see. watch all the pods, so definitely not. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it sucks. So you got to level the witch doctor. I honestly it's think that's like what, what Hell's probably like. And to make it worse, like, chat was like requesting like Rebecca Black Friday. So it's like literally that's what Hell is like, right? Playing witch doctor and like listening to Rebecca Black. That has to be what Hell's like. <laughs> I don't even know who Rebecca Black is. <laughs> so it's I'm awful. glad. I think I'm I think I'm glad I don't know. That's fun. Um, dude, I'm not gonna lie, man. I am so phenomenally happy that you lost the bet, not me. Because that sounds absolutely miserable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And once I saw that's what you were doing today, I tuned in to watch and damn it, it looks horrible. It looks horrible, man. It looks like You know, honestly, if, if I'm not being a fun time. honest, uh, it's really easy so far. Like Witch Doctor is it's really strong. They get the cheap death at 30. So I, I don't see that there's any way I could die. But of course, I might eat oh, those words. Oh, God damn. You just jinxed yourself uh, so bad. But the dots like have really high like base multis. And it's it's actually super easy so far. Okay. All right. I just can't wait to see the if you ripped at 69, 68, <laughs> 60 plus anything. Ripped, like, I have a cheap oh, death already. There's no fucking way, dude. It'd be so amazing, man. So amazing. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about the good shit, though. Let's get into it. What what, what happened? Uh, did something significant happen? Uh, I don't know. They they announced the little thing. Oh, did they? The little thing. They yeah, this is actually thing. our first time streaming the podcast in the Diablo 4 directory. Like, Can you believe it? Diablo 4. Who knew this day would ever come? <laughs> yes. I'm actually That's surprised so cool, man. this directory is still up. I kind of expected it to like shut down. I wonder if there's yeah. like a thing where it's like once the game is like open on Twitch, it's like forever. It's there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Like they had it up so fast too. Did Blizzard contact them ahead of time and yeah. be like, yo, this is the deal? I don't know. But then then people would know. Like they can't. Right. You know? 
I, they must have a content like we're gonna do some shit. Right. Get ready. We need some some stuff fast. Right. You know? I'd so. love to like hear that. Like, Brandy, yeah. if you're listening, like, do, do you have to? Is it the recre open now forever? Or are you guys gonna shut it down? I'd love to know. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's pretty cool. It's um, I haven't got the stream in it yet. Like, I haven't streamed at all. So it's been over a week yeah. since I've been home. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's you know it'll be fun. I I want to do at least one one session of Q&A and, sure. and, and give my thoughts and stuff before they shut it down, I hope. so. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Diablo 4 was announced. Pretty baller, pretty awesome. Um, yeah. the, the cinematic trailer was phenomenal looking. They they had red lights and red things going. Like as soon as you, you know they started to drop it, the lights all went red in the room. There's tons of red theme everywhere. Uh, and they put the posters out the night before that said, you know, the cinematic trailer is going to be unsuitable for children or some shit yep. you know gore and violence and things like yeah, that. yeah we saw those gonna the night before and so everyone's like what the fuck does that mean yeah it was right exciting. it was cool yeah they, they had so we were sitting in the main stage the main auditorium <laughs> uh hall hall d i think is what it's called yeah. i don't remember mythic but hall d yeah. we're mythic hall we're at the actual like the one where where they're on stage announcing it mm -hmm. and as soon as they start playing the trailer like a minute or so in it literally shut down for us. It yep. just collapses Went and black. goes away. Yep. We can hear the audio, <laughs> but on the screen, it looks like, you know, when like wind, old school windows used to crash and it like layers itself over and over and over down the screen. It was doing that. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking in my head, I'm going, oh God, Blizzard does not need this right now. But apparently it was only the main us, hall right. that experienced that problem. The rest <laughs> of the auditorium, like all the other main halls, were good and the virtual ticket was good and all that kind of stuff. I actually haven't seen this video in its entirety yet. Mm -hmm. I still haven't watched the part that got cut out. So yeah, it was uh, it was a moment of like, oh god, you know, like yeah. here we go again. Like and then we're like restart fail. it. Um, yeah. but yeah, what? Did, okay, so the trailer comes up and it's playing and like people are freaking out. Like, what's going through your head at at that point? When you, like, that first. it that it when it crashed no or just, just the like the in trailer in general um oh shit this is it and i just wanted to see the story i wanted to watch it it was like a movie i was into it mm. you know what i mean i'm, I'm paying attention to what's going sure. on you see the the monsters coming and um it was cool i thought it was a little bit on the uh, i want i don't want to say it's too long but i think it dragged on a little slow at first mm. like it was cool and then you wanted something more to happen and it just took a while before like you're like oh my god you know but i do definitely think it was good but i was kind of like hey where's the juice where's the juice like show me the good <laughs> stuff you know right i wanted to see people getting bashed or, or you know diablo or whoever the villain was going to be which was lilith it turns out which we kind of already knew but sure confirmed it you know sure so like this is the spot i think we missed we didn't see any of this we saw this but Something like, happens in the, the well, yeah, is it's right is after this. Killed. We didn't see them like slam their hands down and stuff like that. Yeah, like we didn't see this. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember this. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's weird. I'm watching it for the first time right yeah. now. Um, so yeah, honestly, I, I felt the same way. Like it, it moved pretty slow for me as well. Um, I was kind of like, okay, like I get it. Like, let's get to the juice, you know, like, yeah, um. Like Which, looking back, I, I, it could be a misplaced like thing though, because I'm so excited in that moment. I just want to be like, okay, like yeah, where's, exactly. where's the action? Sure. You know, whereas like now, if I'm like, okay, I'm step back, I'm out of that that environment where I'm so hyped. Like this might have been like top five hype moments of all. Like this, sitting down, like getting in the group. Of, we had all the a big group of streamers with us. Sure. Sitting down. I mean, like everybody was pretty much with us. And we're sitting there waiting and we were so hype and we were all just like talking and all the rumors we heard the nights before mm -hmm. and like talking to everybody. Like this was pretty, pretty juice, man. This was pretty sure. exciting. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, as I've gone, I've watched it a couple of times since. And I will say like since I watched it since, like it was, it was better. I was like, okay, this is a really good trailer. But at BlizzCon in the moment, I'm like, fucking hell, like just like get to it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm showing this like, dude who I'm like, he, he doesn't look like he has any importance in the whole grand scheme of the story. Sure. Like I want to see a Nephilim. I want to see right. a, a, a character we know or right. something. Yeah. yeah, that's important to the storyline. Yeah. So, but this room, the cinematic, the idea, the concepts, yeah. the conceptual art for like all of this stuff, man. The CGI team at Blizzard is top 
tier. Right. So speaking of which, I went to a Blizzard, when I did a Blizzard tour, I got to see the Cinematics building. Mm -hmm. Like they have an entire huge ass building dedicated to their Cinematics team. And it's like, I mean, it's like Hollywood level. So from what I understand, <laughs> they literally get Hollywood directors and things that are just tired of working in Hollywood. And they've like hired these guys on to do their cinematics. Like these guys are like a list triple a movie guys. So it's pretty Damn. nuts. That's yeah. That's dope. Like state of the art equipment. Like everything that they have is the same shit or better than what Hollywood's right. got. And so. then this part like comes on and you're like, Oh God. Like before this, it wasn't like, well, like why was there like the blood, you know, like that wasn't enough to put up that sign. And then it starts getting like, Oh shit. Dude, they fucking yeah, snap like this, this guy. Like right there, his <laughs> arms and shit. <laughs> oh my god, this guy's yeah. gone. I fucked up. This was the best. Uh, this is like my opinion, the best part. He like turns after he gets fucking hit. And he's, he's like, like dude, yeah. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh that makes gosh. me like, god damn, I want to play necro. Like, I want to see some necro juice. You know, mm, look at his face. Like, oh yeah, he's fucked. Yeah, super screwed. That character looks it, like uh, who's the guy from Game of Thrones? Like, yeah, yeah, the um, Blackwater guy. I, yeah, yeah, I kind of thought that too. Yeah. I don't remember his name. It's just like him. If you guys are listening to the audio version, we have the cinematic playing in the background, and we're we're just commenting on sure on it. So, but yeah, yeah. it was dope, man. Uh, it's such a stark contrast to last year, and like just the dead silence that happened after the announcement. Um, yeah, and this year it was just like people were freaking out. Yeah, the yeah. It, <laughs> people like in the Diablo streamer section, I, I'm pretty sure a few, a couple of people cried, which is like crazy to me. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> but like, that's awesome, right? Like to, to finally mm -hmm. like reach that level of, uh, I don't know, just the apex of emotion. I, I, I'm sure that was pog as fuck. I'm excited. Like that, that's probably the most excited I've been for a video game Maybe ever, and I don't think that hype will be reached until it's probably the day before launch day mm -hmm. for Diablo 4, you know? Sure. And it's like the night before or the a couple minutes before when we're, like, getting ready to go live, then sure, that'll be pretty hype, too. Man, the um, detail on these, like, little eye parts, insane, dude. Actually yeah, it's, insane. It's, this is nuts. You would just think it's, like, a real person's face. It's crazy. The cinematics team is amazing. Yeah. That guy looks cool as shit, too. He reminds yeah. me of a villain from a movie that I can't think of off the top of my head. Mm. I don't know. And maybe it was like it uh, looks Apocalypse like... from X-Men or... Yeah, I guess a what? little bit. That's true. Uh, he also kind of uh, looks like the guy from, like, where are those? The Prometheus? Like the, yeah. the ancient yeah. people things? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. You could, I see that. And, like, maybe there might be a Star Trek villain I'm thinking of, too. I wonder where they took inspiration for that guy. Yeah. Um, I need to do more research on him. I asked, like, Nineball and some of the lore people there yeah. about him a little bit, and they told me. But I, there's so much going in and out of your brain. Like, I, I didn't absorb it. Sure. You know? So Nineball said that it's, it's like, a couple things. So one could just be, like, some cultist, and he says mother because, like, you know, he knows that. Lilith is the creator of Sanctuary and stuff like that. And other people seem yeah. to think it's like actually Rathma, which mm. is like the first Nephilim uh, yeah. who's actually... So that could literally be his mother. Yeah, who could, would be yeah. a literal mother type thing. Literal mother. Look so. at that. Like it made it made the cloak out of blood. Dude. Yeah, it's fucking... Lilith's cloak. Super gross. <laughs> it is super gross. It's so graphic. Any kids in chat? It's, oh, God. Too late. It, it's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, so let's, let's go. You know, here, here, one of the things I wanted to talk about that I just discovered today, let's see if we can pop, like, hang on. So Lilith is, you know, the mother of Sanctuary. She boned basically an Arius to make the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. And in this clip, it's a split second. Come on, just show it, dude. Just fucking show it. Did I already miss it? Maybe. Yeah, I think I missed it. But they show Anarius in chains for like a second. Hmm. Oh, was it that 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 flashback scene, perhaps? Yeah, that's not the one. But there's a second one where they show Anarius like in a bunch of chains. So I guess Anarius is like, after he was like outed, you know, because he started Sanctuary with Lilith and like stole the World Stone. Uh, they like the angels like gave him the Mephisto, I guess, and Mephisto like tortured the fuck out of him, like tore his eyelids off. And like tore his wings off, and like so now he's like sitting 
in some like mirrored chamber chamber like looking at himself like mm. f- for like eternity and shit like that so they showed like a super <laughs> quick that's a fucked up dude clip. who thinks of this shit like some writer has to think of that at some point somebody's like well what if we rip somebody's eyelids off and stuck them in a room for a mirror so he has to look at himself for eternity like yeah you but man gotta be a little weird to think that up i like that at first she's like not even looking at the dude she's like mm-hmm. yeah like like I'm right where you dope she looks amazing graphically yeah. conceptually she See looks badass and... the statue that they have of her holding the the looks like diablo's mm-hmm. head you can see her heart like beating yeah. through her <laughs> that's insane the big blood cloak looking canvas right. I, mean, I don't know you know what that's going to become yeah, the, the last yeah. 10 seconds, like, we're just super dope. And then the music they have for it, it's like, oh, God, it's fucking good. Just those two tones, like, back and forth. There it is, there yeah. it is. See what I'm talking about? Oh, fucking true. Do you see oh, the chains? Oh, you think that was it? Yeah, that's it. Like, it's the show Anarius and Chains. And that's... Oh. I yeah, think it's... So I think Anarius will be coming... At some point, he'll be, like, a point of the story in Diablo 4. And he's gonna be huh. pissed. <laughs> yeah, they got a lot of setup. I, obviously, Lilith is being marketed as the big bad guy, but we all know how stories work. Yeah, she's not gonna be the big bad guy. She's not gonna be the big bad guy. She is a front. She's a diversion. Let's come on, chat. Be smart. She's a diversion. I don't know, man. Because like, I agree. It's and, not her. And it's uh, not her. but Lilith like didn't really do anything wrong. If you if you really think about it, so she. Killed all the angels after she found out they're going to try to kill the Nephilim. And the Nephilim are like humans, which are like, I guess, us, right? Like, let's just assume Diablo is the story of us. <laughs> so she like saved all the humans, basically. And then they, she got banished. Yeah. So like she really, I mean, she's sounds like a good guy. Like, what'd she do wrong? Yeah, she's not a good guy. Come on, look at her. She's made of like <laughs> blood. So she, like, she's, you know, just being she's a good ripping mom, people you know? apart to, to come to life. That doesn't look good to me but <laughs> she's gonna conjure up somebody you know she's gonna she's gonna return one of the yeah. prime evils if not all of them and my guess would be that lilith potentially maybe is the main villain for the original vanilla campaign yeah, I could and then that. the dlcs will be like somehow or maybe she gets one of them back um mephisto or, or somebody sure. right and like that's the main villain for the first one and then we get DLCs that are going to be other primevals. So, um, you know, one of the things that we see a lot of is this photo of mm-hmm. Lilith holding Diablo's skull. Right. Um, so, I, right. yeah, I could definitely see, and that'd be cool. Like, if she somehow. Yeah, she tries to bring him back, and at right. the end, we end up fighting Diablo for the majority of the campaign. I think it'd be cool. I don't want to fight. Let's, let's say. I don't want to fight Diablo in the original. Like it better, better be in vanilla, expansions in, in vanilla. Yeah, it better be expansions okay. down the road. So I think I like what you said. So Lilith is who we fight in like the first like you base the base vanilla game. We fight Lilith, but like mm. maybe we don't stop her in time or something like that. Yeah, and Diablo's like still summoned, and so he's like it's, it's super easy for them just to get. There's such a big library of bad guys, right? You know, so it's like new expansion. We get a new bad guy, and she somehow does it. You know, yeah. So. But I, I, I ultimately think she's a she's a diversion for mm. something bigger and better, mm. you know. So, I mean, dude, we kicked Diablo's ass, we kicked Matthew's ass, we've kicked Belial's ass, we've kicked everybody's <laughs> ass, sure. right? So, like, she isn't as powerful as them. Yeah. Well, by, like, yeah. In breaking. Theory. Well, that's know? just based on us, like thinking that maybe blood like gets diluted, but we don't really know. Yeah, if that's the case. Like Lilith yeah. could be OP as fuck, but we don't know. And we are twenty years older, I guess, in this gameplay. You know, right. so <laughs> whoever the hero is, I don't know how they're gonna. I don't think we're playing the same heroes. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we're playing Nephilim or not. No idea. So that's the lore portion of it. Let's talk about how it felt. Yeah, and so play. next they had the gameplay trailer come on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they did a really good job on this. As well, yeah. uh, the guy's voice, the voice actor they got for it, it was like it, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, the gameplay. Okay, so like, this is gameplay footage. Yeah, that we're gameplay watching footage, right now. which is really clean. And people were saying like, "Oh, it doesn't look better than D 3 <laughs> like, What are you on about? Smoking? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> have you seen uh-huh? the textures in D three? Like, dude, 
Yeah. This is night or night and day. Yeah. Like when you zoom out in an ARPG with the isometric angle, it's you can only make it so pretty. Like sure. as you zoom in, more detail will show. But phenomenal. This game was phenomenal. It looked absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I, again, stunning. I don't think like any of the recorded footage you guys see like really does it justice. Like when you were playing mm -hmm. it, like real it time, beautiful. it was insanely good. The lighting effects were top tier. The new engine that they designed for Diablo 4, and I do have confirmation. I directly heard somebody ask the question to uh, Joe, who was like one of the main um, game director, I think might be his title. I don't, I don't know. He's like the head dude for the D4 team. Yeah, he's it was like lead fundamentally, designer. is he designer? Lead designer, yeah. Lead designer. One of two. He, he, uh, he confirmed brand new engine. No, yeah. Like, from I don't the think there's up. any question. Like, if, how could you look at this and be like, oh, yeah, that's the same engine they This using. isn't like a ported D3 <laughs> engine. It's not a polished <laughs> right. D3 engine. This is right. brand spanking yeah. new. And, like, lighting is so key to this game. Um, I can confirm, like, when you're playing Sorceress and you shoot fireballs down hallways, like, they completely light up and mm -hmm. then go dark. And, like, you know, as things are on fire and burning, you can see it generates light. Sure. So, so like, blood and guts and gore yeah, so fucking were gory. just, ugh. Like, it's cool. I, I mod <laughs> like one of the things with this engine is like, so if it like rains or whatever, like the divots in the ground will like will fill up with water. But what mm -hmm. I saw frequently is like there are areas where like there's just a lot of blood and the blood would even pool just like the water would. Yeah. That was fucking, yep. oh, it was gross, but it was sick. It was, it was super gross. Like I was playing the, the, the druid and I went to like, you know, they call it werebear form. I went to werebear form and like smash these enemies and they literally blew up like guts everywhere, like all over the place. It was disgusting. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, that's yeah. gross. There was so much detail in the the explosion of guts that it was kind of like, if you really paid attention and looked at the details, you're like, ooh, those are like intestines and shit. That's absolutely horrific. That's nasty. So, <laughs> um, yeah, they definitely doubled down on the darkness. Yeah, you know? for sure. But like this gameplay footage you're seeing right here that we're watching in the background, mm -hmm. dude, it, it looks better. Like in real life, in, in real time. It was insane. It's it's better than that. Things yeah. that I noticed, like you you're up on a cave and there is a uh one of the one of the missions, the main story quest, you have to go into this cave and then you have to drain water out of the level to go down to the level two of the cave. And as the water is sitting there, if you look into it, there's like fish swimming in the water and the water's right. got this glow to it. And yeah. there's just so much detail put into the fine elements of it that it was it was like once you start noticing them, you're like, oh, dude, that's badass, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so to, to walk me through like your very first time that you played, like what, what's going on in your head? What, what did you pick first? And like, what did you like? What, what was going on? In your head? Uh, so I picked Druid first because it's new, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. you know, I'm like, oh, got to play the new class. Um, so I picked Druid, and at first, the first thing that goes through my head is is I load in the game, and I just wanted to read the abilities. Mm. So I literally just mouse hovered over the sure. abilities real quick and got a quick glimpse of what they do. Um, and then I'm like, okay, let's go. And then I instantly realized I don't have my Diablo three key bindings, uh, and that really sucked <laughs> because <laughs> I'm used to playing a specific way. And... Um, I, I tried to instantly pause and change the key bindings, right. but it wouldn't let you. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sure there's going to be key bindings in the finished product, but for the sure. demo, they didn't let you screw with it. Yeah. Uh, so then I started playing around, and I, you know, I I smashed things and saw the guts, and I was like, oh, okay, it feels really smooth. One of the things I looked for specifically was they they talked about how smooth the animations were from skill to skill and ability to ability, and so I was in my mind thinking, all right, let's let's pay attention to that. And it looked smooth, man. It looked great. Yeah. Like, like attacking things and transitioning weapons and abilities, no delay, no hiccups. It it felt really fluid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was great. Um, you know what you just said? I actually like one of the few things I forgot to talk about in like my recent video. But like, you can't pause. I just like I just put that together. You yeah. can't pause. Like, and there's I no, just there's no escape that. pausing. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um. Yeah, I mean, I picked Barb for my first playthrough because, you know, Barb was my main before Necro, and um, so I was like, yeah, let's get in here and let's see what let's see what the Barb boy's all about. And so my first playthrough, um, you know, if I'm being honest, like, I, I was walking through the world, and, like, I was 
overstimulated because I'm like, what should I do? Like, should I go to this dungeon? Should I like figure out, should I explore the world? Like, should I follow what the quest says to do? Should I just like go do my own thing and like try to break the game and stuff? Like I was overstimulated, which is a great thing. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, as I played the full demo my first time around, you know, the, the bar four or I'm sorry, five of the six skills were skills from Diablo three. And it just felt so familiar it was like mm-hmm. it was surreal because it was like I'm playing a Diablo three barb, but I'm in this like new engine and like so it kind of felt like I was playing a Diablo three expansion where they just like upgraded the graphics all of a sudden, right? Um, so my first impression of the yeah. game actually wasn't super great, and mm-hmm. it really wasn't until I started playing like the Wiz and the Barb that or I'm sorry the Wiz and the Druid that my opinion stepped up. When I started playing the Druid, to me that like and I think we both agreed on this like the Druid was just insanely yes. better than everything and yeah i don't know if that's because like we you know we didn't get to druid in in diablo 3 and so like it just mm-hmm. feels the most fresh um everybody had their own favorite class which yeah. is funny so i talked to a lot of people and it was super spread out some people like barb the most some like sorceress some like druid um i think people whatever you gravitate towards in d3 i think is what you're going to end up liking in, in d4 so I don't think it's that much of a different game that you're going to instantly be like, oh, I, I need to relearn what I like. Like, yeah. no, it's it's a lot of the same. It's just polished. It, it's, it feels, I felt the same. It feels like an extremely polished D3. Sure. Um, and for the for a beta demo, that's probably like a fucking alpha build, pre-alpha. Yeah, pre-alpha, like, probably, I mean, yeah. This is probably pre-alpha. I mean, who knows how early in the dev cycle this sure. is. But it to feel this polished at this stage gives me a lot of hope because it's only going to get better, I think. You don't uh, think? I mean, okay, so, yeah, okay, so if we had gone into DL4 and everyone had just, like, pogged out and was like, oh, God, you know, like, all the systems are great, and, like, I, I could see them, like, pumping through this game and, like, adding all the polish that we you know, so desperately want. But I feel like because I, I think that they're going to have to rework a lot of the systems as they are already. I mean, granted, it's like forever out. Um, but what they showed us, you know, I mean, it's, it's the, like you said, it's a Diablo 3 clone, which, you know, we as Diablo 3 players were like, you know, that's not that bad because we we like Diablo 3. But I, th- right. I think it's I think it's kind of dangerous um, to have it's it be It's definitely got to differentiate itself a little bit more to me to to be what I want it to be. Yeah. Um, I, I think... I'm not disappointed at all with the game. I expected it to feel a little bit different and it felt really familiar. So is that a bad thing? I don't know. I don't think so, but it definitely doesn't feel like, for example, Mm -hmm. if I play lost Ark, that feels drastically different to me. Like I know I'm not playing a Diablo title when I play that. When I play POE, I know I'm not playing a Diablo title. When I play that, it doesn't feel anything like D3 to me. But this felt a lot like D3 to me. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad thing. I do want it to be different. But I think a lot of that also depends on what in-game systems we do. The combat feels good. And if the combat doesn't change a lot, I'm not, like, super sad. I do want it to change more. But if we get <laughs> enough in-game and activities and all the other things added into it to make it what we want, then the combat's not going to be enough to make me be like, well, this isn't good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and again, what I will say, you know, as much as negativity as I can give, uh, what I will say up front is like, I think the most important thing you can do for a game is like nail the engine, and they absolutely fucking did, like one hundred thousand yeah. percent. So you can rework systems, you can redecide on like itemization and stuff like that, but like the engine is so important and it's so fucking good. Yeah, and something something that that they told us that makes me super excited is that they they reiterated so many times and even the one-on-one conversations I got to have with some of the D4 guys, they built this game with PVP in mind, 100%. Mm -hmm. Like that is where the core of this game started. Whereas with Diablo three, they made this badass PVE experience. And then they said, okay, how can we make PVP fit? And they're like, we can't, we're just going to scrap it. Right. This game is going to have PVE or PVP, and it's going to be in the game. They're designing the game around it, and that makes me excited because that's like endless content. There's always something fun to do. If there are PVP modes that are fun, 
You can go do PVE, mm -hmm. get tired of that. You can go do PVP. You're not just doing the same thing all the time. And every every PVP experience will be different, man. Sure. It'll be pretty cool. So yeah. plus what if they put like things back in the game? If I can walk around with a necklace like Lord Fluffy's ear, you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. put some put some of your parts on, you know? Oh, yeah, dude. What if they do PvP crafting? Like, what if I made like a Lord Fluffy outfit? You know what I mean? I have like fluff <laughs> ears and hats and pants and uh, all kinds of God shit. God damn. No. Yeah. Uh, they did say that, you know, the, the itemization won't be different for PvP or PvE versus PvP. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Um, yeah. You know, I, again, I, okay, so talk to me. Like, what are your thoughts on like some of the systems that you, that you saw? Because, like, we, I think most of the chat has probably heard my point of view already yeah so i I, I really feel like um when i first started loading in and we got out into this open world right you had a choice on what you wanted to do it wasn't a straight linear path uh you really had this more open environment where you could uh, this is shiny let's go check this out sure. or there's something over here let's go check that out and there's a clear guidance to take you on the main quest path if you wanted to do that mm-hmm but you didn't have to. And so I think I played through the demo at least 10 times, if not 15. I don't know. It was a lot. Every time I did something different. Every time I did things in a different order and did something different. Like one time I went through the quest lines as much as I could until I got booted out. You had a 15-minute timer on the demo. Mm -hmm. As soon as you as soon as you pick the character from the character selection screen, it started a counter. 15 <laughs> minutes later, it reset and took you back to the counter. Mm -hmm. So the world boss encounter was super fun. Yeah. I mean. He's about to walk um, out it, actually. Yeah. Let, let's just, let's go back to that for a second. I know this is the event, not the world. The, uh, the, the, the world boss, you run in, and as you get closer to this world event, it tells you what's going on mm -hmm. or when it's going to start. Um, and, and the world event starts, and the boss is so gigantic. The camera literally zooms out so you can see your character and the boss on the screen at the same time. Um, he had brutal mechanics. If you got hit by one of his wind-up attacks, it was a one-shot death. Um, it was, some of it had telegraphing, and some of it I feel like didn't have yeah. very good telegraphing, which is kind of awesome, I feel like. Um, Do you just have to memorize attacks and learn? Yeah, I'm trying to see if, if you had the any footage of it as you scroll through. But yeah, you had to memorize his attacks. You had to see what he was doing. No. Um, they had a stagger mechanic built in where if you stunned him enough, you know, you could break his claws off. And then he couldn't damage you as much. Right. Uh, it, it just felt really good. It felt like a really good boss mechanic. I don't feel like the difficulty of the game was showcased at all in this. Sure. It's and I demo. feel like that's fine because right. it's a demo and they want everybody who's there who have maybe never even played ARPG to have a good time. So um, I wouldn't let that scare anybody. But, the, uh, you know, <laughs> it was it was good. It was a fun time. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, if it, it felt good, especially on the Druid, um, but there's just so many similarities to D3. And they showed us, you know, my. I'll get, just give you my three biggest alarms and you can tell me what you think. But okay. one was they showed us the itemization chart, and on that yeah. it had ancients. Now, mm -hmm. that could maybe not be a literal yeah. translation, <laughs> right? Of what yeah. ancients could mean something entirely different. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a huge concern. I agree with you. I, I think some people don't agree with us, by the way. I talked with I talked with some some people. I'm not gonna name people because I don't know. <laughs> some people. I talked with some people that that are like huge in the ARPG scene. Okay. And I don't think that they agreed with the not with the ancient and like Titan Forged or Primal ancient feeling like that was um easy content or lazy content so to yeah, say sure that they felt like it was a legitimate rng chance thing and they liked it mm. but that to me personally and i i hope the majority of the community agrees i don't know is um i don't like it man it feels bad it's it just feels like it's rng on top of rng on top sure. of rng like you got to get the roles you need you got to get the, first you got to get the item you need then you got to get the roles you need then it's got to roll ancient or a primal ancient right. i mean it's like rng and R, it, it just feels super crazy right. awful so uh and to touch on that so like that was one of the questions i asked in the q a panel right uh, I said, it seems like the the demo was very much about, you know, pointing towards 
alluding to eventually you're going to have a legendary in every slot, like a lot like a Legacy of Dreams build or mm -hmm. Lawn build from Diablo 3. Uh, I was like, can you like, you know, kind of confirm or deny basically if that's the route you guys foresee Diablo 4 going? And he, I mean, he said yes. Like basically in a nutshell, he said yes. We intend players to have like an, an, an or legendary in every slot in the end game. Um, and I, again, they have yellows and blues. And so I assume that crafting will probably get phased out uh, just like it is in Diablo 3. Hopefully we get ways to craft or better ways to craft legendaries. I did say that uh, their plan is to have like in-game gear be like augmentable, um, yeah. modifiable, uh, whatever that means. Hopefully it's not just like, you know, <laughs> augments from Diablo 3, but... I think the crafting system will get will will be better. Um, I, I really do. I, I heard a lot of times people talk about crafting and how important it was, yeah. and how they're working on a lot of crafting systems. They just couldn't show us them. Sure. So I really do feel like they get that crafting is important. Yeah. Um, I, I really hope that's the message that I took away from the conversations I listened in on. Uh, so I think crafting is going to be important. I mm -hmm. hope so. I really, yeah, really hope so. Me too. So. So that's that's number one. So what's your second concern? Uh, <laughs> I mean, one of the like the smaller things is, uh, you know, they talked about in day two uh, how you could get shot from off screen. Mm. And I hit that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, okay. And Diablo 3 <laughs> suffered from that and they nerfed it because people like complained about okay, it. I got clarification on this okay. because that I heard Quinn. Quinn got to ask some questions. Okay. Uh, I, I heard him asking questions, and I, I'm not going to – it was off the record? his stream. Oh, okay. So I don't want to, like, throw people under the bus because I don't know if this was a private conversation. <laughs> but I was standing there too. Okay. And Quinn was like – you know, Quinn is like super Quinn right. off stream. <laughs> like, he's, he's the he exact same right. off stream as he is on yep, stream. True. Which is awesome. Um and surprising at the same time. And he said something like, uh, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm not perfectly going to quote this, but like he said something like, man, that really sucks that we're going to get one shot from off screen. Like he's like, that's, that's really shitty. Like just basically gave it to him super flat out. Like sure. that's the shittiest mechanic I've ever heard of. And they were like, well, I get that. And, the ballista arrow things they're going to shoot you off screen whatever they they call them yeah they're going to fire a warning shot first that has like 0% chance to hit you so you know that it's off screen mm. and then if you don't move or decide so they said that the reasoning that they wanted it in the game <clears throat> is because it's going to make you have to make decisions do i kill these mobs i'm fighting right now sure. and dodge arrows or deal with the arrows shooting me or do I go kill this arrow thing and potentially let all the mobs stack up or whatever, you know, that I'm ignoring? So, but from the looks of it, it looks like this thing's not just going to one-shot you off screen. Is uh, I mean, I'd be surprised if it didn't at, like, late levels, but... Well, I, I'm saying at least the first shot. It's not okay. like you're going to just, boom, sure. get mauled over and then, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Interesting. I personally hate that. I think it's, <laughs> I agree with Quinn a hundred percent. Like when he said it, I was like, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Like somebody, <laughs> somebody else. actually is like, yeah. cause everybody knows Quinn. You know what I mean? Sure. Everybody respects Quinn as like, he's a huge ARPG player, man. Mm -hmm. He's played every ARPG, right? Sure. Like, and if he's like, yo, I, this is stupid. And I feel the same way. And then he's telling them, I'm like, all right, well, hopefully they're listening to Quinn. So, um, but I don't know. <laughs> As long as you don't have to be the one that says it. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I don't. I think that he's gonna get more, uh, more people listening to him sure. than I would. Sure. You know, but I, I reinforced what he said. I was like, I agree. I, I don't like it. You know. So. Yeah. Um. So. Like, what? Were, was there anything that you saw that you felt like was uh kind of alarming? Mm, I, yeah, but I got explanations for most of it. Um, so to me, one of the things that really was disappointing to me was the skill tree. Yeah. Um, I saw when I when I saw the talent tree. I, I said skill tree. I meant talent Talk tree. Sure. When I saw the talent tree, I was like, "Oh shit, we got talent trees!" And I got so excited. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, 
And then when I got to play the game, I like hovered over the talent tree and it was like adds 2% to this adds sure. 1% to that. And it was super basic. Um, I got clarification later on that that stuff was that way for the demo, just kind of as like a placeholder. So sure. we knew that they had a talent tree and that wasn't actually reflective of what they plan to make the final talents. Like they right. actually expect to make it meaningful and make you have hard decisions like, Ooh, this is really good. Ooh, <laughs> that's really good. Which one do I take? I don't know. You know? Um, yeah. So that's cool. That that's, you know, sure. what I wanted to hear. Uh, uh the community is already memeing that, and they're calling them talent twigs because there aren't a lot twigs. of routes yeah, to no go. Choices. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully that, again, I agree with you. I, that's the impression that I got as well. It's like, Hey, we're thinking talent trees. And we want to show you that that's what we're thinking. It wasn't so much like, yeah. hey, this yeah, is our final People are taking form. that at face value, right. and you shouldn't. Right. You shouldn't at all. Um, um, so well, that's cool. I mean. Sure. What else? What else did you see that? Um, That's skills and a built like, you know, I, I can't deny that it felt a little too D3-ish combat-wise yeah. to me. <laughs> Um, I agree with you on that point. The sorceress and barb felt so sorceress and barb, so wizard and barb mm -hmm. to me that I was instantly drawn more to the druid. I mean, the druid just felt better to me anyways. He felt sure. more powerful, but they just felt so much the same. Mm. And other people didn't agree with that. Other people liked them the most and felt that they were amazing. But to me, I was like, I've played a lot of hours of this already. Right. Um, now, did they give us familiar skills and abilities and talents just to make it less be comfortable? I don't know. But yeah. I really do hope that the game feels like a new game, not like a Diablo 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's kind of what I'm scared of. The engine looks beautiful. The gameplay looks beautiful. It's got a lot of MMO qualities, which I personally love, like the shared open world. Um, everything about it seems like they went in the right direction for almost everything I just feel like I hope they tweak skills and abilities and, and things to sure. make it feel different. So. Yeah. And I, you know, I agree. And I, I've said a little to this already, but like, uh, you know, I, I don't mind. They, they seem to uh, allude to that. They're going to do like expansions and, and seasons like right out of the box. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're getting a good, a good, good amount of content with, with that stuff. Um, so I wouldn't mind like say, you know, like all the barb skills we saw, like I counted them up and I, I want to say like 70% of the barb skills were recycled from Diablo three for the, yeah. the for the barb and, and D four. Now yeah. I don't mind if like as far as expansion content or seasonal content, maybe you bring some of those skills back from Diablo three, like seismic slam or something like that. But like, there's so much you can do with the barb. Like I would love to see what blizzard, like let's, let's think outside the bounds of what we've seen already. Like what else could a barb do? Right. Like, yeah, it can't just be you know seismic. I expect and, some fan favorites to come yeah. back, man. I expect whirlwind to come back to a barb forever. Yeah, I think That's leap just, and whirlwind are staples. Yeah, kind of kind of things. Um, I would be disappointed if they recycled seventy percent of abilities across the classes. Like that would be disappointing to me as yeah. too. Uh, if <laughs> if the majority of the new skills we use are new skills that are new to Diablo franchise, that's cool. Yeah, I don't expect them to create. 20 new skills for every class that are all unique. Like, I think that's asking too much as well. Like you can name something, not seismic slam, but if it does the same thing, you might as well just call it seismic slam, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, like Barb had the new ability where he like stabbed him yeah. in the head. The one like, new ability. Yeah. That was gruesome. It was sick. Yeah. You ran up to an enemy. It was on number three. I don't remember what the ability was called, but it was right. a number three ability. And if you ran up to an enemy and you like number three them, you your barb literally would like pull a, a knife or a dagger right. out and like stab it in their skull and pull it out. Yep. It's and cause it, was, it would like cause them to bleed and if they die while they bleed, it, the cooldown was reset. So like the skill yeah. wasn't bad. It was it was yeah. interesting and it was nasty looking. Mm -hmm. I, the first time I did it, I'm like I literally went, oh, I just stabbed him in the face. Right. Like, that's literally what I sa uh, said that out loud, like, yeah. at the demo station. Like, it was it was gruesome. It was awesome. Sure. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's kind of my thing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, but for me to say that it feeling is feels too much like D3 is a negative, that's a pretty good negative. I yeah. Mean, I, I, it, it did for feel us, good. Yeah. I, I, I do want more, mm -hmm. but if if... It's what we got. I hope we get new classes. I hope that we got two classes <laughs> left. 
yeah. that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. I definitely think Necro is going to be. We'll one. get into that. Don't, don't don't don't. We'll mm. get into that. In a minute. So um, the other class is a brand new one. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I hope they they just explore uh, other things they could do. And I again like part of the opening ceremony for Diablo was like, you know, best in class combat. And so I hear that, and I'm like, okay, like they're gonna try to like maybe clone what Lost Ark does. Um, and to me, Lost Ark combat is still like way, way better than what we saw in D4. So I'd like to see them like embrace, you know, the best in class combat because I mean they're they're ranked two right now. Um and I didn't like how it was, you know, you got a you got a generator, you got a resource spender, and you get four cooldowns. Yeah. Like that's Diablo three. And again, you didn't even I, have you didn't even have a generator on the sorceress. It was yeah, you literally true, just true. had to sit there and wait. Yeah, you know, wait for the that man to felt come back. Really bad. So um, then again, I again we're both DL three players. So if this poof this game comes out tomorrow, we're still gonna play it, and we'll probably like it. You know, for the most part, it won't be everything that we wanted, but we still like it, and we like DL three a lot. But uh, I think there's so many people that like either one walked away from DL three because they're really upset with it at launch, and so like for a big portion of players to come back and have a, the new Diablo feel like Diablo three, I think that's just it's just dangerous, and I, I would hate. Yeah, I think the combat's going to be fluid enough that most people would be happy. Um, I think a lot of people haven't ever played Lost Ark either. <laughs> True, you know. Yeah, Lost Lost Ark Still combat 9A, does right. feel good, but it does have very locky animations that a lot of people may not like. You know what I mean? I could see. I I personally think Lost Ark combat feels really really good too. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't even hit the end game in it, but what I've played, it felt right. it felt good. It felt fun. It. it Lost Ark had that way of making me like, I want to kill anything I see because <laughs> right. it's fun to kill anything I see. And like when I was playing the D4 demo, I felt a lot of D3 in me where it's like, I want to just find specific loot to get. I want to kill elites. I want to skip the trash. Yeah. I want to do this because it, it still had that feeling of it's so familiar to me right that i didn't care about really yeah. exploring the combat to feel that that's true i man. wanted the loot i just wanted the loot and with lost ark it was like i don't really care about the, what loot. the loot is right <laughs> i enjoy killing the things yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it's a completely different mindset true. but that's so true i i you know i don't know that that one is better than the other they're both just different and i think i've had so much of d3 that I kind of enjoy the Lost Ark because it's new. Now, if I had 6,000 hours of Lost Ark, would I still feel that way? Would I still want to kill everything on the screen? Probably not. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just because it's new. Sure. So um, if I'd have to pick, I would say Old Familiar is probably better. Mm. But, I, but I would say that Lost Ark's combat does feel really damn good. And um, I would just say to people, go play it and see for yourself, man. Sure. Like, go play Lost Ark and see what the combat feels like. Yeah. You know, you don't even have to commit that many hours in the game it's free, to yeah. feel the combat. Like, two hours. And you're ar two hours and you're already like, oh, the, oh, I get it. Right. You know, <laughs> I get it. So. Um, I want to touch on real quick, because you, you mentioned combos, right? And so your question yes. in the Q&A panel, maybe you can talk about that. Yeah, so we had the Q&A panel, and, and it was a bunch of guys. We got to sit down with with um, two people from the Diablo 4 team. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the questions that I asked specifically was, uh, in Diablo 4, are you guys going to have any synergies between classes, specifically chaining combos together off of abilities? And um, what I was hoping that they were going to say was yes. Like if you do X, Y, Z and then another character does X, Y, Z, then it's going to like realize you both did your thing and boom, we get some magic that doesn't normally happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, the response I got was that's a really interesting idea. We'll look into that, which is kind of the way I took it. Is that how you took the response? To no, him? that's exactly what he said. He said, huh, that's a good idea. Like that's like yeah. almost verbatim what he said. Yeah, like, like, oh, nice, you know, yeah. which is cool. So if it becomes a thing in D4, you guys can thank me. But um, but it makes you wonder, was, because, like, we saw that in Immortal. And yeah. So it's like, do you guys talk amongst yourselves at all? I don't think so. I, yeah. think that they, I, I don't think they do, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Sure. I'm saying I've been on Blizzard campus. Yeah. I've seen how massive it is. <laughs> it is 
ridiculous. Yeah, dude. And I think it's like yeah, go going ahead. to a university. And I so. to 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 touch on that again, like how there might not be a lot of communication between teams. So we saw Diablo three like like kind of finally nerf thorns on Necro, and then that post they said we realized that Necro, like we realized that thorns isn't necessarily the most exciting play style. Uh, and then we saw runes that said like the next thorns bit of damage you deal will do like thirty percent more damage or something like that. So like they're bringing back thorns, even though like in Diablo, yeah. yeah, I to me like do they talk? Um, so. You know, my only bit of insight to that is that, like, I, I didn't get to go inside the D4 building. Mm. I did get to stand in front of the D4 building. <laughs> D4 has its own building on the campus. It's huge. Okay. It's super huge. And then, like, it's its its, its own thing. So, okay. like, they're in their own spot, right? And, like, the WoW building is its own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it... The scale of the campus was bigger than I thought it would be. Like I expected to go there and there'd be like a building at different levels and people's teams would be next to each other. And it was like, no, it was just like a college campus. Like you had all these buildings and there were people walking around from building to building and cafeteria like you'd have on a college campus and like all this stuff. Um, I think they said there was like 4,000 employees, 4,000 plus employees. Like that's Just for Diablo or like? No, no, no. Okay. Just at like, Blizzard headquarters. Shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's a lot of people, man, yeah. you know? Um, so, and it just, you know, I don't know. Who, maybe they're working on combos or things like that, and yeah, they just didn't want to talk right, about right. it. I mean, we don't know, yeah. you know? But I really hope that there's some synergies. I think that's mm -hmm. a missed opportunity that no ARPG has really taken super advantage of to this point, except for maybe Immortal when it comes out. Um, and I do want to touch on that before we leave, so let's not end the podcast. Sure. I'm okay. going to put it on the schedule now. Um, but... Um, yeah, I think and and again to to further touch on like so you know my review was was pretty critical of what we saw and um, you know people are like how can you even like say that we don't know much about the game yet but like again it's it's just to review what we saw you know what I mean like well, that's all we can do and they said they're open to feedback so like you know the, the point of us talking about it and while it might sound critical it it's really just to like hey Blizzard you like this stuff probably should get looked at and stuff like that it's not to just like yeah shit I want to talk about. Some of the positive things sure. that you saw from it. Let's 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 talk about for, for me, one of the things that I was like, oh, this is amazing. I think the open world concept felt phenomenal. Of course. Yeah. The shared world and the open linearness, the maps, sure. the verticality they added to the maps, finally. It doesn't feel flat, like, mm. you know, it there were hills and mountains and right. <laughs> cliffs that went up and down. And it was it felt great. Um running into a space and seeing random people run by. Like, I was out killing some mobs. This dude runs up and helps me start killing some of the mobs. Right. And I didn't know him. I had no idea who it was. Sure. You know, so that's going to be a thing where you can, you know, a world boss is coming and you're getting your ass kicked. You could be like, hey, you know, message a guy. Hey, this, I need some help. You know? <coughs> sure. Let's let's kill this thing. Uh, and then the size of the map, the sheer size of the map. It was insane, yeah. It looked big. It was really big. I mean, it'll be hard to say... If they put a bunch of dead space in it, like, oh, there's a lake here and you can't go to the lake and it's like half the zone or some shit. Yeah. But if they make most of the map playable playable and navigatable area, like that's amazing to me, man. Yeah. I think that would be awesome, man. Yeah, I think that like that's oh. a super easy win. Like who would ever say, you know, like, I want my game to be instance, you know, like you know, like yeah. oh big open world, like kind of a no brainer. So uh, they did great. They did great on that for sure. Going in dungeons, so the dungeons, oh, they, yeah. they, um, mm -hmm. I, and I asked specifically to one of the devs, uh, on the side, like, I said, one of the things that I'm super excited about is your random generator 2.0 that yeah. you talked about for the, the areas. And the response was, like, yeah, we put a lot of work in making it so that every time you go into a dungeon, it does not feel the same. And it's like, well, because and then I reiterated, I said, in T3, once you memorize the tile sets, you know where to go. You know what direction gets you out of that rift level. You know exactly what mob density you're going to get, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, yeah, we put a lot of work into the random generate the 2.0 tile generation system or whatever they sure. call it. I can't remember what they called it. So that has me a little excited. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, the modifiers on the keys can be a fun thing. And they kept saying, like, this is just one in-game system. This is not all of them. There's going to be several 
in game systems, yeah. but I heard a few, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <coughs> you know, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see what other in game activities we get. No but doubt. The, the, at least the generation, if they really nail the randomness of these dungeons, then at least that'll be cool to like feel like we are in a brand new zone yeah. every time we play it, you know? Yeah. And then the, the big thing about that too is like the, like the seamlessness continues in the dungeons. Like there's no more zone level two, zone level three, zone level seven. Like fucking great. Like it's just one dungeon, uh, which yeah. just feels so good. This yeah, was kind of yeah, cool. I don't know if you saw this, this, just in the gameplay real quick. So, like, the summoner has multi-shot. So that means every single time he summons, he summons, like, multiple mobs instead of just one. And so, like, yeah. you really got to focus him down. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just, like, there's no point in killing anything else. Uh, and that, that, that was a pretty dope idea. I really, really like that. But mm -hmm. anyways, The UI cool. is, is pretty cool with the affixes over the enemy's heads. Yeah. No. You don't have to hover like, over like the name could, and shit. Like, yeah, you could clearly tell what affixes they had if it was, like, I got one that was fire and frost or something, mm -hmm. or molten and frost. It was it was interesting. It was cool. I was like, I don't know if I've seen this before on right. an Elite. <laughs> so um, this guy's going to fight forever because he's, like, not even focusing. Yeah. He's not focusing the summoner. Yeah. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. I like little little changes like that. Yeah. Went a long ways. Smart. So. Okay. Uh, Is that the mounts looked really cool. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mounts looked really mm -hmm. cool. Um, the dismount abilities, I, I feel like they set themselves up in a way where they can generate revenue after the game releases. Uh, there's definitely going to be cosmetics on the mount. There's definitely going to be cosmetics and transmog for your character. Even though they didn't straight out come and say there's going to be a store for these things, you know there is. You know there's going to be a store for armor transmogs and horse armor pieces oh, yeah. and maybe probably even horse transmogs. So it, it definitely sets up a, a way that they can continue to fund the game, which I think is super important and people are going to get pissed. Anytime you start talking <laughs> about money, like micro transactions or stores, people are instantly like, oh, we want the game for free. Like, listen, man, Blizzard is a company. They want to make money. If they're not making money off the game, they're not going to support the game. So we need good systems, fair systems in place at the launch of the game to continue to generate money so they continue wanting to pump content into the game. Right. And and I think it's I think they they are gonna hopefully do that. So Yeah. And some of the transmogs, like, look, yeah, they've showed that us. Looks, <sighs> that looks sick, man. That super, looks like a necro. Super awesome. Dope. It does look necroish, doesn't it? You got shredder it's for supposed to be sorceress though. Yeah, it's sorceress. Yeah. And yeah, then, shredder, right. And the good the interesting thing to note thing is they didn't like necessarily confirm or deny gender locking, but See, all these concept arts seem to have both sexes. So I think that yeah. gender locking won't be a thing. At least I hope. They Which... did say that the the character creation selection mm -hmm. that we got to pick at and the demo <coughs> was was curated just for sure. the demo. That what they plan to do at launch is they plan to have a male and female version of every class. And then you can completely customize your class from like skin color to mm. hair to, to markings, scars, eye color. It's going to be, think of uh, World of Warcraft only juiced up mm. so you're gonna have um a lot more options but it'll be kind of like that kind of like yeah. creating a character on i hope that. they don't spend too much time on like i want to be able to make my nose slightly bigger and stuff yeah. like that yeah it, it doesn't have to be full up. slider system like some of these games yeah. get into <laughs> but i think having the ability to at least make the character look the way you want it to look i think that's cool um <laughs> some of the some of the preset like like witch doctor I mean, even though it's a in D3, even though it's a garbage class in D3, so I wouldn't really worry about playing it. <laughs> I hate it. Like, I hate cosmetically. I do not like either the male or female character they gave us. They both look like crap. So, Okay. But. China? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm just joking. Wish Doctor's not that bad, guys. Sure, sure, sure. Racist. Um, but yeah. The transmog so, up, and yeah, I agree with the uh, cash shop. It's it's a smart play, and it's, it's interesting. interesting. I think I don't know. I I feel like you're either from the environment where you play PUE, and if you play PUE, you know that a cash shop works. But mm -hmm. if you don't play PUE, and a lot of people are freaking out, kind of because I think they alluded to a cash shop pretty well. Uh, if you don't play PUE, like a cash shop sounds terrifying. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, yeah. If you if you've never played any kind of game that supports supported by a cash shop, you got to realize you don't have to buy any of it. <laughs> it doesn't make you buy it to play the game. Sure. Now, some games more than others, like Poe, severely inconvenience you if mm -hmm. you don't buy it. But you can still play without it. And Diablo is going to be a, a box title with a set price. You're still going to get cool ass transmogs, and you're still going to have all the content provided of the DLCs with your purchase. So right. I don't think it's going to be one of those. Like, are you going to get the 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 flowery rainbow horse without shit like the that. cash shop? Probably not. You know, we talked about that. What did some... you What did you think about this? Right. So they spent all this time making this world super dark and gloomy and stuff like that, and then like maybe Christmas rolls around and they're like, "You can buy a Santa hat in the cash shop." And it's just like so now you go from like this dark, gloomy world and you see just people walking around with like fucking Santa hats and shit like that. That would piss uh, me off. Yeah, I don't think you could until the game's towards its end of life. <sighs> you know what I mean? Sure. I think at first you got to stick to the theme a little bit, but. I completely expect by at some point down the road you're gonna get like buy this flamery flame you know ghost rider or motorcycle horse <laughs> you know and they're gonna have some stupid shit right so you know yeah because <laughs> eventually you're gonna be like I really want that everybody will notice me mm -hmm. you know it's it's all about it's all about showing off right it's yeah. about hey look what I got yeah and so as long as you can get people to look at you, then they're going to make other people jealous and they want it too. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how the cash shop works, man. It's about flexing, right? Yeah. So the guys show up in POE with those big badass transmogs and wings and stuff. You're right. like, ooh, <laughs> you know? But yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about, we're probably going to break down every system on like every podcast in the coming month. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to have to dive too deep today. But, you know, one of the things we really kind of wanted to talk about and theory craft on is there's there's kind of two big conversations in my opinion about you know we had three of five launch classes announced mm -hmm. um and so before we kind of get into the juice let it hit us with what you think the other two are yes uh, necro's gotta be one <laughs> i really do i feel like that's a core staple <laughs> And, okay. and, like, you haven't pissed off the Diablo 4 team yet until I don't think you yet. pissed them off yet. I mean, I just made a, you know, D4 review. Maybe I pissed them off yesterday. Okay. All right. So. Well, maybe they all haven't seen it yet, <laughs> and it's too late to uncommit. But um, as long as they don't hate you yet, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. um, the theory is that it's going to be, like, Paladin and Amazon because of some leak that don't, came don't, out. Sh like, sh 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 just tell us what you what? think it's going to be. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I think it's going to be Necro and um, Necro and Demon Hunter. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so we'll get into, you know, what I kind of heard first, right? So one of the things, and you were there right next to me, they talked about the world, and we sat in this world panel. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they talked about when they talked about, um, was it Skull, Skulls Glen? Skulls Glen? Mm -hmm. Scoslin. Yeah. yeah, and there's like, oh, you know, this is the home of the demon hunter or the the druids, and like they yeah. really drove home the fact that, you know, the druid is, is from the zone. It's the zone of the druids, right? And so, right, yeah, there's five zones being announced. So immediately, my brain went to, okay, five zones. One of the, one of the character classes is going to be from each zone. Um, bing, bang, boom. We know. And so I reached out to Nineball, who's like Mr. Yeah. Lore. Yeah, he um, was in here earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, what? If, if we're talking about the, the five zones, the two remaining zones, like, lore-wise, and this is on the spot, so, like, you didn't get time to, like, super research it, but, like, what do you think, like, those two remaining classes could be? And so, he said, uh, immediately, like, for the swamp area, Hawazar, mm -hmm. that he, he would say Necro. Okay. And for, I don't know if it, it was this, there's two, there's two desert zones, so I don't know if it's Dry Steps or Kazakhstan, but he said, okay. like, really the only thing it could be it would be Wizard or DH, and since, I mean, like, Sorceress is already a thing, mm -hmm. DH would be the thing. And so to drive that home, you and I were just walking around, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. randomly looking at art, and they mm -hmm. had four of these. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, or if you're listening in, uh, they had like four basically pieces of art set up and they're all the same size and they all had like a little subtitle. And so they had one set up for the Druid and it would show you like three 
variations of how the druid looks and then they had like some weapons on the right and some like facial ex- like expressions or appearances and stuff like that and in the bottom right would say like druid concept right and then they had mm-hmm. one for barb barbarian concept yep. and then they had one for uh sorcerer sorcerer's concept and then they had a fourth yep. uh where they're showing a guy with a bow or a girl with a bow and arrow and in the bottom right it says hunter concept mm-hmm. so that kind of reinforces how nine ball could potentially be correct because they could yeah. call demon hunter a hunter like that could be a thing yeah I, I mean i saw this and i instantly thought oh hunter class okay or well, is this is this uh, they're not stupid though if they put this out they know i mean it says hunter on it so mm-hmm. i don't i don't know i think it's kind of obvious i think it's kind of misleading that, that kind of makes me default back to something else <laughs> i i think um, I personally would be super disappointed if it's Demon Hunter hmm. because okay. that means if it is Demon Hunter, let's say that I'm right. And so we got the three confirmed classes, Barbarian, Sorceress, and Druid. Okay. Sorceress is pretty much Wizard. And then yep. Barb is obviously Barb. Yeah. So we got one new class out of three. We got Necro. We've already played that before too. And if we got Demon Hunter, we've already played that too. So we really only have one new class. But in, like we're Diablo three first players, five. right? Like for Druid, like D two D two players, like feel the same that we do probably. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so, are they going to give us like Amazon? They're going to give like they need a new class. They need a new, cons- like never been in Diablo before. They need mm. at least one. One of the classes has to be something we've never ever ever played. Mm. Okay. I, I, and I really hope that they do that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and again, to like drive home. So, you know, to, to me, it makes sense to have these five because one, you've got, you know, you got your bow and arrow type or your archetype, which would be this hunter, right? And then you've got, if it was Necro, you'd have your summoner type. And people have said, well, Druid technically has summons. The summons that we saw were more like companions. Yeah, then they 100%. were like straight summons, and so I would say they were that always there, yeah, and yeah, that the summon Although role they did have built. an attack mechanic that felt really good. Like it felt should, like DH like a, attack. I mean, it, did it feel good? It, it, it felt like <laughs> something that should be built into D three better. Like it's like it was D three. It was literally D three. No, but if it summons and then you use it again, it would switch and make them attack anything that you hit it on. What the same you, summon button. What do you? It think? wasn't like so. Like all right, here's an example. Like let's say I have my Rothman Necros out, right? Yep. Like you cast it and it would attack what you have yep. targeted, and then as soon as that dies, it does whatever the fuck it wants, and there's sure. no way to retarget that ability. Yeah. And with this one, you could always hit it, and it would if you it would target, and all of them would attack the thing you had it on. When you you got to reverse because you can spam command skeletons and have it target to the next target in D3. Whereas in command this game, there's a cooldown. Yeah. There's a cooldown. You can you couldn't command it to attack a certain target for like 20 seconds. And D four, it was a twenty yeah. second cooldown. It wasn't twenty, maybe oh, like it? fifteen, but it was. Yeah, a cooldown. I didn't realize. I didn't notice the cooldown was. So on what it was basically happens is they combined command skeletons with the DH companions, and so com- using it would not only command the target, but it would also give you a buff. Mm. Um, I thought it still would attack even if it was on cooldown, but maybe not. Mm-mm. It, it maybe attacks, but you don't control it anymore. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought it, it could target it. Mm-hmm. Either way, um, I wanted something new. I, I want. I don't think that Druid counts as a minion class at all. Right. And so that makes sense. But then someone linked this to me earlier this week. Um, you've got this leak. And so immediately I looked at this like, oh, it's garbage. Like, like it's easy to say this stuff. But then you look, it was submitted four months ago. And the leak says, you know, basically this is this is what's coming. They say official title, title Diablo 4, Roman numerals, no subtitle. Okay, got that right. Camera view, right. isometric MMO ARPG. We don't know if it's an MMO or RPG necessarily yet, but isometric nailed it. Definitely has MMO ish uh, tendencies. Yes. Uh, okay. And it says no load times uh, except for loading the game for the first time, logging in, logging out. Okay. I mean, other than going to dungeons, we didn't see any load times, you know, seamless. Yep. Uh, new sophisticated engine with tons of improvements. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, granted, these are, are generic, but it gets like, like, God damn it. Like everything's right. Uh, main for consoles in mind from the get go. Okay, the art style. Yeah, the art style is very dark, gory, bloody, and gritty. Okay, True. fuck, nailed that. Um, the Blizzards are happy with many systems improvements they've made over the course of Diablo three. Um, so I mean, you kind of nailed that too. Like it's very Diablo three feeling. 
Mm-hmm. Um, next point is kind of the same thing. Music is harking back to Diablo 1, Diablo 2. I would agree. The music I, I felt in the demo was really good. A lot of it was just like ambient noise, but they nailed that too. Really? Um, uh, bu- 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 what was the other thing that was? The demo lasted about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, demo showcased some of the core elements. Uh, it showcased the barbarian class and a bit of druid as well. And who would have guessed <laughs> druid would have been like the you know one of yeah. the base classes in a demo, right? Right. So like, boom, there again is like, damn, you got that right too. Um, the world sanctuary is much, much, much larger than it's been in the past. Okay, fuck, you got that right too. <laughs> Uh, Tristan will be a hub city. We don't know anything about that yet. Um, you can trade items in the game, such as gold and crafting materials. And again, that's one of the things they touched on how, like, crafting materials and stuff will always be tradable. Um, and th- this doesn't touch on, like, you know, the one time trade and stuff like that. Uh, the chat, sh- the class showcase to uh, Blizzard employees in great te- detail is a barb. Signature moves will return. Druid was also part of the demo, extremely short. And but they said, uh, the bar or the say it says something about the druid and they like nailed how the druid felt the demo showed how druid can use the combo system i don't know somewhere in here they said like the druid wouldn't it wasn't like a permanent shape shift it was like a temporary but the the change right. was fluid and it's like damn got that right too but so the big point here is later on the post like one of the points towards the end they say paladin Barbarian, Sorcerer, Amazon, is Druid are planned for launch. So Paladin, yeah. So this wouldn't say Paladin and Amazon, which, you know, to again, like this could definitely, Hunter could just be Amazon reborn. Yeah. Because Amazon, like, means female. And so maybe they're just going to make Hunter so they can be, like, both sexes. But then again, we go back to this, like, Sorceress was announced. And so, like, Sorceress isn't a dude, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I think there's going to be a male sorcerer, yes, sorcerer. Yeah, sorcerer. Sure. Yeah, there'll be a sorcerer, sorceress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, you know, paladin would be cool to me. I would, I would rather have a paladin than a demon hunter, a hundred percent. Okay, but no um, necro. I would be a little. The necro could always come as a DLC. I just think that it should be part of the base game. I think necro to me screams Diablo. Like that's like. You know, Barb and Wizard are the two staples, in my opinion. Those two are, like, always going to be there no matter what. Okay. And then I think Necro is probably third on my list. Like, Barb, Wizard, and then Necro. Yeah. I think that's the order for me <laughs> it goes in. You know? Yeah, so let me run this hypothetical by you. Okay? So, Diablo 3, you know, our first character class that we basically pay for just, like, it's a hero pack. where We, we got the Necro. We have to pay to play the Necro. Fast forward, it's Diablo 4, and again, we see, like, maybe the first character pack that we buy is the Necro. And so, like, there's already memes. It's like, oh, you know, Necro is, like, the pay-to-win class. And then we mm-hmm. do that again in Diablo 4. Like, I'm, I just, like, that sounds like a kind of a scary, annoying PR situation type deal. Not that they really care, but I just hear yeah, it I don't from the community already. But what do you, you don't think it matters at all? Um, probably not. Okay. No. I mean, people are still going to buy it. <laughs> They're still going to play it. <laughs> you know, does it make sense for them monetarily to leave out one of the most loved classes to yeah. sell the DLC? I mean, you got to think of it from a business perspective, mm-hmm. too. If Necro was that successful in D3, maybe to be that successful in D4 as well. Sure. You know? I want to show you this, though. Uh, so Quinn put out this, like, huge, like, one of the polls that we did in our stream. And, you know, so his yeah. his sample size is significantly larger than I's, right? Uh, but he said, what class do you want to see the most in Diablo 4? And so he did, like, Paladin, Dark Knight, Amazon, Assassin, Necromancer, Monk, Wish, Doctor, Priest, Demon Hunter, Inquisitor, Engineer, Warlock, Bard, Shaman. Uh, Dark Knight better win. Amazon wins by a landslide. That's crazy, dude. And I, like, I didn't know that, that was a thing. Look look at Dark Knight, though. Yeah, it's Holding third. It up. Right. That's and what Paladin I'm saying. second. So, like, you look at the... Two that are potentially part of the league, they're technically on top. And this Necro's is where the guy until... made his league post about. You yeah. Know? <laughs> but it's four months ago, though. Four fucking months ago they made that post. Um, But what's interesting here is 3% of the vote said Wish Doctor. 
I mean, Ouch. yeah. Ouch. Dude, nobody wants that shit. Ouch. Sorry, all it's you just, doctor players. It's just Big Daddy Dan, like, voting over and over. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny, funny, like, people voted Bard over, over Witch Doctor. Jeez. What the heck is going on? <laughs> and you know, something that, that I wanted to ask and never got a chance to was um, if they were going to embrace class roles in this game more so than D3, like tank and healer mm -hmm. style, especially with it picking up the MMO aspects of the game. Right. Um, did you ever hear anybody talk about that or ask that? Uh, yeah, I, I heard there's like definitely they want to get away from like any kind of support role. Like really? They, they That's know, good. Yeah. That's good. Quinn, Quinn asked on his stream, he's like, so like support monk and like support barb have like been a fucking thing since the start of time. And it was like, yeah, we definitely want to get away from like the support type roles. Hmm. I like that. I actually, yeah. I actually think that's a good thing. And I mean, for those of you that love the support roles, the reasoning I think is um, a lot of people want to just go in and smash face and it feels like it's, it's a forced role that you have to take in order to be efficient, even though that's not really what you want to do, you're forced to do it. And if there's only one role and that role is just kicking ass, then everybody wants to kick ass. Right. And so I feel like it just gels better. Um, so it's a good thing. And it, and I think it also leads to less exclusion in the game. I think there's a lot of times in Diablo three where you're excluded <laughs> from grouping up with people because you're only going to take supports and then these guys are the better things. I, I think it just leads to more, uh, gameplay with friends and and not worrying as much about meta. Sure. So meta will definitely still exist, but it'll yeah, it should be better. Uh, so this so. leads us into the poll we wanted to ask for this week. So I didn't want to ask that big long one that that, that Quinn sent out, and so I'll send this one to you guys. This mm -hmm. is basically a kind of a dumbed down. Okay. So of the most likely classes in Diablo Four, so this is based on you know the quote unquote leak from four months ago where they said Paladin. Um, hunter slash amazon or whatever uh or what we think could be an option as well which would be you know dh which is thrown into that hunter category as well and necro so yeah. there's technically six in this poll what do you guys want to play what would you want to play at launch like what immediately does your brain go to and that's what you want to play go vote on that mm. don't say anything that's for next week mm. <laughs> so juicy i want to talk about um, it no I want to talk about Absolutely all not. the things, I man. I know. But we could be here all night. Uh, but yeah. We got to save some juice for next week, too. You know, one last thing I wanted to show. Uh, we, you know, took like a community photo. <laughs> all the boys. So many people. Yeah. Couldn't get Quinn in there, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, he was a super busy dude at BlizzCon. But it's funny, like, so this, <laughs> this Reaper showed up. Yeah. Out of nowhere. And just, like, wanted just to be in the photo. Like, just wanted to be in the photo. And then, like, kept coming back as we, like, would pose for another photo. And so SVR was like, can you get the fuck out of here, please? <laughs> 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 it's like, whoa, SVR. Damn. Oh, Damn. Dropping it funny. down. But, yeah. That's That's, that's the funny. actual community photo. Which is the good. actual photo. Look at that centerpiece. Woo! Goddamn. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sex. Pure sex. Me chilling in the back yep. next to uh, is that Wolf next to me? Yeah, Wolf is on his knees. He's on his Wolf knees. Wolf was definitely bent down right there. So. <laughs> He's actually thirty feet away in this photo. Like it's just yeah. perspective. Oh, it's pretty sick. Yep, yep. Nice, nice photo. It was so yeah, difficult to organize that many people to take oh, yeah. a photo. Yeah. So. But it's cool. Like it's, it's always cool. cool getting to hang out with like the people and yeah. This year, they, like. I felt like I had spent more time with people I didn't get to spend time with last year. And the people I spent more time with last year, I didn't even, like, basically see this year. So it was interesting. I know. It's it's really weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hung out with you, obviously. And then... <laughs> you did? Uh, and Bloodshed quite a bit. Yep. Like, that was fun. Yeah. Um, Bloodshed's super cool, man. I like yep. that guy. And then uh, I got to meet just so many people. I mean, pretty much everybody in that photo mm -hmm. hung out with at some point. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't get to see was, Leviathan all that much. I don't even think I gotta speak to him. Yeah, but everyone else. Times, yeah, but yep. yep. Everyone yep. else was pretty, pretty fun. Good. The the community aspect of it was one of the one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was just just hanging out and 
the difference between the the atmosphere this year and last year. Oh my god! I think made it all so much better. So yeah, instead of like going up to people and being like, "What? The <laughs> what fuck? are you gonna do you know now, I mean? bud?" You know. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, you know, because you got to realize, like, a lot of us, like, this is this is like what we do. This isn't just like a like sure. a fun hobby. This mm-hmm. is like how we make a living. Some of them make a living. Some of them, you know, yeah. not me. Yeah, <laughs> not us. And right. and. And so when you go up to them and they're like, man, what the fuck am I going to stream now? What am I going to make content on? Instead of having that feeling, they're like excited. They're like, sure. oh my God, this is going to be amazing. Right. You know? So it's such a different atmosphere than last year. Yeah, um, it was dope. It was pretty cool, man. Yeah. It's pretty cool. For sure. But it was, so, you know, it's kind of cool. Like, so I got to see, I, I was kind of treated, right? Because the the community is like it's pretty tight and so it's pretty nice and so like the community was like you know maybe it's not going into some into some areas and stuff like that but I got to experience I feel like I got to experience BlizzCon from like both perspectives like both as like a just kind of a like a normal person going to BlizzCon and you're like waiting in line and some of like way the waiting line was actually pretty fun because you would like talk to the people next to you about like oh what do you think what's your favorite and yeah yeah, yeah. you know you know just like meeting fans and stuff like that and then I got to have times where I was like hanging out with you and like. You know, you had a media pass, so you could you had like the ability to like basically skip the line, and I could leech off that a couple of times. So it was cool to see like to get like that perspective on on both things. Um, obviously, like the I didn't get any insight on like the community event and like the dinners and stuff like that, unfortunately. But, yeah, uh, it was interesting. It was actually it's actually actually kind of cool to experience both a little bit. So like I know what I'm missing, and at the same time, <laughs> like I experienced it like <laughs> yeah. a normie kind of thing. So it was yeah. cool, man. No. Yeah, it was it was cool, man. It was it was an awesome experience. Um, I didn't wait in any of the lines. I definitely took advantage of the media pass. <laughs> well, why wouldn't uh, you? So, like, ah, I'm gonna wait in so, line anyway. <laughs> it was it was fun. Um, yeah. To to it, you know, it felt pretty cool to be like, I'm important, right? <sighs> yeah, sure. Line, please, sir. <laughs> yeah. You know, in all reality, it was really cool. Um, so, Diablo team hooked me up, and I appreciate it, but. I had a, a, it was awesome, man. Yeah. Like just the, everything, and uh, people are saying that I had a red shirt. The shirt was actually pink. Mm. It's the lighting mm. that made the shirt look red. So True. the photo, like that area, was extremely dark yeah, where we took that picture. Place. It was a really, really bad spot, and they had red lighting everywhere for the Diablo because yeah. that's like the Diablo Four area right. of BlizzCon. All the computers so, were like, red. All the lights right. were red. Everything was red, and so it just you know, I, I definitely did not pull a red shirt guy sure, <laughs> good god yeah <Did> you, <laughs> no I, tell tell this tell the story about about the first person you see yeah so I, I land like thursday night and i did like a ride chair thing you know because i'm not looking to, like spend a bunch of money going to BluesCon since it's all out of pocket um so you know i did this ride chair thing it cost me like 15 bucks and basically like you just jump into like a shuttle with a bunch of other people and drop off get drop off drop off so the, the ride chair ended up taking like two and a half hours for like a one hour drive so I finally like get to the hotel and you know, I'm calling you. I'm like, okay, where are you guys at? Like, you guys are getting beers already and stuff like that. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna beeline it to wherever they're at. And I'm I literally walk out the hotel and I'm on the sidewalk and I'm, I hear someone's like, Fluffy. And I fucking turn around <laughs> and it's red shirt guy. The very first person I see at BlizzCon is red shirt guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is just like so ironic. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. Man. It was, it was pretty, pretty funny. So one thing I wanted to talk about uh, before we, you know, get into the, we got a bunch of questions today too. But before I get into the questions, sure. um, I played Immortal at the at yeah we Blizzcon. played it together. Yeah, yeah, and um, it was it felt better than last year even. Was it because it was on a tablet, or what are the other things? I think they updated stuff, and I actually got to talk to Wyatt a little bit, yep. and they did update some stuff. Mm-hmm. They made changes. They added a new class. Demon Hunter was available in the demo. You got to play it on a phone or a tablet. I played it on the tablet. Um, the tablet actually, I feel like, was a much better experience than the phone okay. just because of the screen size. Um they had the, the, I guess they like clean the tablets after every time somebody uses it, which makes total sense, right? But like my tablet was super not smooth. It was sticky. Like my fingers kept like gripping the screen really well. And so it actually like <laughs> made my thumb get sore. Um, yeah, we both had a little sore thumb. 
And, and, yeah. and I think it's just because their tablet was so like polished the whole time. Sure. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I've never had that happen. It's also it, warm, it felt, like too, like the tablet. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but it felt better to me. Um, it definitely felt very Diablo-ish. Sure, it felt like it Diablo felt like DL3. three. Yeah, it felt a lot like Diablo three. Noticing a trend here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually, if I were being honest, uh, graphically, it might have looked better than Diablo 3 on the tablet. Like, definitely looked pretty decent. Yeah. Um, played well. Uh, they added a new ultimate ability into the game. Which we didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't notice it the first time yeah. through. I guess the tooltip that explained it, I either skipped it yeah. or wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Um. So, you know. Yeah, it's definitely more polished. Uh you know, one of the things I picked up right on way, or picked up on right away was uh, they had unskippable cutscenes, and like mm -hmm. I just that stuff drives me crazy. And so yeah. we like we both had those moments where like we're like we watched the cutscene and we're like looking at each other like, like yep. <laughs> we just want yeah, to test definitely, the game. Definitely would be nice to add skippable cutscenes yeah. in the future. I I think that that's I can't silly. imagine any game doesn't silly. have skippable cutscenes. Cutscenes. I mean, what was that game? I just like Borderlands, like. 95% no. unskippable cutscenes. Terrible. Mm. Yeah, I, I hope that that's added too. Yeah. Because some people just want to grind. And I think they will. I think they understand a lot yeah. of people just want to grind it. I mean, that Diablo is like a grindy game. But so. I, I mean, I'm just going to go on a limb and just say that, like, man, I honestly feel like this could be a really great mobile game. It's still going to be a mobile game. Sure. But I feel like it could be a, a really good mobile game. You know, uh, I concur. I, I, I tend to think that there's no chance to me that it's not going to be a successful mobile game. I, I don't think yeah. that there's any question. Like the, I think mm -hmm. it's polished for a mobile game. Again, we have to use that caveat. Yeah. Um, I just like, you know, will the PC players like it? Will we like it as hardcore Diablo fans? Maybe the first playthrough. I don't know. I, yeah. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I, I think it could be something that I play on my tablet as I'm just chilling. You know what I mean? Is it going to be like a replacement to like my PC gaming? No. But... Is it going to be like probably the game I go to when I'm going to play on my phone? Maybe. It depends a lot on the pricing schemes and other things that we don't know anything about yet. But the game was fun. I mean, graphically, it looked good. If they get the loot right and they give a reason for you to actually grind the loot in the game, it could be fun enough. And and I really feel like um, I really feel like Blizzard still got a battle to climb to 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 get uh, public opinion back on their side. Yeah, um, and if you're watching now, Fluff just pulled up. Is this a, is this a new trailer? Yeah, this? this is what the one they released like on the side. Okay. Yeah, and and I I feel like if they if they can get people to play it, I think their opinions would change dramatically. Versus just being like, oh, it's a phone game, fuck it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And some people may not ever be changeable, but I definitely think that if I'm gonna play a game on my phone. This would probably be the one I'm gonna play. Sure. I don't can't say I'm gonna do that a lot, but this would be the one. So right. it was good, man. I guess is what I'm trying to say. It was better than I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there it was, was that. It was all right. It was all right. So. <laughs> all right. You know, some of this, I will say, like, some of this cut scene, um, it gives me kind of like a wow vibe. Like, this zone kind of. Yeah. It's the like the green. It looks yeah. lich or uh, legion-ish. The same one here. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, but graphically, look at that though. Like when you—it's not bad. That that looks better than Diablo three. You know <laughs> what I mean? I think it does. I think it looks. I think the, you know more detailed man, the than three. The run animation still looks super goofy to me. I don't know. Uh, I feel like they looked more polished in the demo we played than that. Yeah. Send that trailer right there, but you know who knows? Yeah. Demon Hunter had strafe, and I love strafe. That's like sure. one of my favorite abilities in D three. So I was definitely grinding. Yeah, a lot of strafe. And again, strafe killing. to drive home, it's you know it's gonna be a lot like D three. We saw legendaries for the first time. We finally got access to like the inventory. Yeah, they they gave you like uh, two legendary bon or two legendary weapons for the demon hunter, mm -hmm. which buffs strafe, so you could strafe more and do more damage when you strafe, and yeah, um, other things. So so yeah. again, it seems like the goal and the Owl Immortal as well will be to basically get a legendary in every slot. Yep. So. It's like they're doubling down on no sets. The they hate some sets. They love apparently. they love legendaries in every slot, and uh, I don't know. I didn't get the same impression that like everyone's saying like, oh, okay, the sets will kind of be a stepping stone. I didn't necessarily hear that as heavily as other people did. 
It it was. I I even heard that reiterated later on. Yeah, and even when but, I went back to like watch other people and they said it to other people, I didn't get like a hard like, oh, it's just gonna be. A, I got like a. We want it to be like a. You know, if, obviously, like the end game stuff would be like ancients or whatever they want to call yeah. it, like a mythic. But. And one of the meet and greet things that we were talking, like one of the networking things, uh, there was conversations going on. And and again, I heard the double down on sets are going to be like entry level legendary power, but like your ancient and like mythic legendaries are going to definitely be stronger than sets. Mm. So, uh, I, you know, I'm the balancing kind of on that on seems that. like it would be hard to keep pulled off. I'm kind of torn know? on that. Yeah. So. I think All like right, if, man, yeah, if you're not gonna have if you're not gonna have end game, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if if it's not an end game item, why even waste your time? I, I don't know. Why is it even in the game if it's not going to be for the end game? Is it's kind we of can my break opinion. this conversation yeah, down I into think, a little bit more future, for next podcast. Yeah, yeah, or, or like one of the future podcasts, yeah. we can talk about itemization and 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 kind of you know get opinions our our, our opinions on that. Let's let's jump into all right before we go into Twitter questions. You know, every week we usually have an episode of Fluff Hates, right? Yeah. I'm mixing it up this week. Okay. It's gonna be Peach Out Hates. <laughs> Peach Out Hates Frontier Airlines. Mm. Let me tell you about it. Okay. I went to fly home from BlizzCon. Got on, got Started traveling at 10 a.m. Got stranded. I, honestly, I haven't broken the math down, but I got stranded in Denver for, I'm going to say 10-ish hours, roughly. Stuck on a plane. Frontier, first off, I've never flown Frontier. Okay. It's definitely a budget airline. Their sure. seats are super budget. They don't move. They don't recline. They don't really have tray holders for your stuff. If you want to like watch your laptop or a anything um they're they're pretty uncomfortable uh there's no space i felt like the lady sitting next to me might as well just sat on my lap but mm -hmm. that's okay that's you know most airlines feel like that sure um but we get there we get to get you know i have a connector get to uh denver get off go to my connection place we wait for like an extra hour after we're supposed to already be on the plane before they board it okay they board us all on the mm -hmm. plane We'd literally sit on this plane for like two and a half to three hours with no AC. I don't understand why there was no AC, but we're all like sweating. I've taken my hoodie off. I got like sweaty armpits. The lady next to me is like fanning herself. And so finally, like the stewardess is walking by and I'm like, can I get something to drink? Can I buy something to drink? Like what the hell's going on? You know? And she's like, I can't sell you anything while we're on the ground. Hmm. I don't know why that matters, but I'm like, okay, that's fine. So eventually after about three hours, they kick us off the plane. They're like, we're going to get a new plane. The plane's broken, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. So everybody on the plane is like, really? Like, you know, we're pissed, right? Sure. They kick us all off the plane. We're standing at the, they don't even tell us anything. They're just like, get off the plane. They, we don't know anything yet, but we're probably going to have to get a new plane. There's we're no not sure. Just yeah. Get off the plane. <laughs> So we're, everybody's kind of lingering, learn, you know, running around. They're like, okay, we're going to get you a new plane. Go to this gate. Okay, so it's a couple gates down. We go to the new gate. We're sitting there chilling for like an hour or two. And then they come on, and they're like, oh, just kidding. We fixed your other plane. Go back to the other gate to get back on the other plane that you just got off of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're like, you son of a bitch. So we go back. We get on that plane. Anyways, long story short, man, I ended up getting home at like four or something in the morning last night. Sure. Uh, it was pretty bad. Pretty fun time. I mean, it's, yeah. Every, I mean, every airline has that, man. Like, I mean, you can fuck. have trouble. You can have problems I, anywhere you go. Even I. Like, but, I was supposed to go home. I was supposed to have a direct flight from LAX to K MCI, and they're just like, you know what? No, we're going to reroute you to Vegas, and you're not going to get home until 11. It's like, fuck, yeah, that's, cool, dude. That's ridiculous, dude. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So then they're, they're like, oh, you know, here's a $50 voucher, but you have to use it within 90 days right. to fly Frontier again. It's like you're giving me 50 Free bucks to come back -ish. to your shit Discount company. Trip. Yeah. How about no? <laughs> so anyways, I, I hate travel. I really hate traveling. Like Why? Blizzcon was it's the best. Phenomenal. But that trip back is just, was, man, it was horrible. It was so horrible. <laughs> a yeah, baby man. cried for like the entire flight from L.A. to Denver the whole time. And I was like. 
If I were the mom, I would feel so bad because yeah. I didn't even feel like she was even trying. She yeah. was just like, whatever, fuck it. Yeah, I've she been had given on. Up. I was on a fight to Philadelphia once, and like this kid was like, just the worst little fucking shit you could possibly imagine. Like the kid was like punching, like literally punching his dad, and screaming at the top of his lungs for like an hour and forty five minutes straight, the entire flight. And you're like, oh, he's gonna get tired at some point. Like he's like he's gonna lose his voice. Right. He's just gonna get tired, but. Didn't fucking stop the whole fucking time. Yeah. Terrible. It, it was it was so bad. I, I don't know. I like I felt bad for the kid because I felt like whatever it needed, the mom wasn't even trying. Sure. So, but you know, it's not my kid, not my family, not my life. Yeah. I'm not gonna intervene. But I was like, dude, please. But you know, speaking um, of long flights, I got a really long yeah. one coming up. When are you? So are we having a podcast next we have a week? Podcast next leave? week, and that'll be my last stream before I leave because I leave Wednesday night. Okay. Um, but yeah, and so if you guys didn't see some of, so, uh, so we I couldn't find the direct tweet, uh, but it's like a Reddit post where Chris Wilson himself is like, you know, it's almost like he says like nice try Blizzard, yeah, which is fucking. <laughs> He's almost like we got this. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm so curious. What? Okay, let me ask you this as like a person that doesn't play that much Pee Wee. Uh. Like, is there anything that Pee Wee could do that would make you like same level D four excitement? I, it's out of my realm of comprehension to say what they could do, but could they? Sure. I mean, if they show off, so I, I'm excited for Exile Con because sure. it can't be bad for us, right? Even yeah. if you hate Poe, competition is great. Right? Competition is going to make everybody step their game up. Diablo four. Is going to make Path of Exile step its game up. Diablo 4 is going to make Lost Ark potentially come to North America sooner than it was going to. <laughs> sure. Like all these things, you know. Could they? Yeah. If they do a graphical revamp and we see it like smoke in Diablo 4, like let's just say that they come out and they're like new graphical engine. And like we're just, what if they just redo the engine altogether? Sure. Like we just rebuilt it. Yeah. And we come and we're like, we like pog the fuck out because it looks amazing. What if they come out and they're like, we've added this? I mean, yeah, man. There are things that they could do to get me excited sure. 100%. Right. More than D4? God, I don't know. It would have to be sick. It would have to be super sick. Yeah. You know? I mean, if but they I'm did, excited, yeah. though. I like. I, I don't even... I, I'm not a play, POE player. Sure. I played, like, whatever, two weeks, right? Something like that. A week. Yeah. And, and I'm excited for it because either way, it's going to make Blizzard step their game up. Oh, yeah. It's got to. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm 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 super excited. Uh, you know, again, it was like, you know, so we we got the Diablo information and then like opening ceremony kept going and I like looked over at you and Bloodshed and I'm like, okay, see you guys. Like I'm gonna go get in line for Diablo. <laughs> like because yeah. I just don't care about all the other stuff. And so right. you know, if there was a Diablo con, like it'd be the pog most pog thing in the world, but there's not. So right. I'm really looking forward to yeah, this. Yeah, you left the wow and all the other stuff. You yeah, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm out of here. Like <laughs> <laughs> I watched the WoW like cinematic, which I you know, it was really good. The cinematics uh, were top tier for every game. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see any of the other ones because I pieced out. But um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect. I think honestly, if you'd ask me like what could bring Poe on like DL4 hype levels, especially after playing DL4 so much, I think to me again, if they like poof, like it's it's now an Unreal and uh, we're redoing it, but it's gonna be that Poe. Like we're taking everything from that's in PUE right now, and you're you're just gonna get that, but it's gonna be like you know, in a, like this crazy graphics engine. Uh, I think they would. I think they need to streamline and simplify for beginners a mm -hmm. little bit. Well, sure, I to be PUE, competitive, but for like yeah, for me, yeah. like what I like what would pop yeah. me out. I would see and see for me because I'm not a Path of uh, Exiles expert. Sure. I think myself and, and a lot of people out there, oh, yeah. they gotta they gotta get people interested in the game. They gotta suck people in. And I think now there's so much content and so many systems that it's just like, boom, here you go. And you're like, what the fuck? What do I do with there's so much noise? I don't know what to do with it. Um, I don't really know how you could do that, but sure. I don't know. But I almost you feel know? like they m maybe shouldn't at this point because you know, you look at Diablo 4, and it seems, once again, that Blizzard will be, you know, mostly focused towards the, the casuals and the, uh, the people mm -hmm. that don't really like, you know, like when they game, they don't want to be, like, confused or overwhelmed and stuff like that. And I think that 
<laughs> like, you know, obviously PoE's market is like the very hardcore, like love the in-depth style systems. And so maybe it won't even be in their best interest to like make their game a little bit more new friendly because there's going to be maybe a lot you of definitely players. definitely can't dumb it down. That's, that's their meal ticket is the complexity, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So for me, if, if they could find a way to explain, <laughs> like they got to keep me in the game. Yeah. I don't want to tab sure. out. Sure. I don't want to tab out to do all the things that I need. I don't want to have to watch a video to learn how to craft one piece that I, you know, like, I don't know, man, it just, it seems super crazy. And I get it. If you're a PoE player, like once you get your head wrapped around it, it's, it's probably easy, but, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. So here it is. <laughs> Someone said, uh, I don't want to remember what the original post was. What is the original post? It was, oh yeah. It's a Diablo four announced. And then someone's like, Oh, GGG, get your engines ready. And so Chris was Wilson said, no problem. Two weeks. <laughs> no problem. I mean, we'll see, right? Fucking ballsy, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, for me, honestly, like if, if Pee dropped like a graphical thing, I don't know that I, I don't know. Uh, I guess like I finally be like, okay, bye Diablo three. Like, <laughs> to be honest, um, I, I would. I, so as shallow as it is, a graphics matter to me a yeah. lot. And we've talked about it many times. And if POE can make it look phenomenal and they can step up the fluidity of their mechanics a little bit, like just make things feel and look better. I would definitely probably put more time into it. A hundred percent. Yeah. So um, let's hit some Twitter questions. Yeah. What are we at? Let's do like, it. Uh, how long are we? Almost two, two hours, hours already. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> So uh, if you guys want to submit questions to the podcast, obviously next week's is going to be the last one before GGG uh, Exile Con. Yeah. And um, so get them in, submit them. You can tweet at the peach out at Lord underscore underscore fluffy, or you can join our discords, which will be in the links below to, uh, to get in there and submit your questions. We got a bunch this week. So if I didn't get to yours, I apologize. I kind of had to handpick some of them. So we didn't have a two hour question section. Uh, John says, if you had to pick between PoE 4.0 and D4, which is it? Well, we don't know about PoE 4.0 yet. Yeah. And I'm personally a Diablo guy, so yeah. for me, the choice is D4. I agree. Unless GGG can just, like, destroy me in two weeks when they have ExileCon. Yeah. So. It's hard to say. Like, ask, maybe we should answer that, like, after ExileCon. Yeah. That's a good one to revisit, John. Yeah. Make sure that you drop that again yeah. when, when Fluff gets back from ExileCon. Uh, the dirty one <laughs> says, "Is there anything Exile Kanga that can announce to outdo the D three announcement? The D four announcement? That's yeah. Yep. I, maybe I wrote that wrong. Or maybe typed it yeah, wrong. Yeah, I think if uh, if if honestly, you put Poe in like Diablo Four's engine, it's the most pog game of all time. So, <laughs> to me, anyways. So yeah, to me, it yeah, would we'll see. Beat the pants off of D four, but um, I'm sad, Panda." says, based on the limited D4 content Blizz revealed, what is the top thing you saw that needs to be changed or improved? I'll let you take that one first. Mm. Um, me personally, as a personal thing, I like every single aspect I saw of the demo, but I think the combat needs to be improved. And I really hate to say that, but I feel like the combat feels so much like D3 didn't differentiate the game enough. And after playing, if I wouldn't have played Lost Ark, I don't even think I would say that. Mm. But after playing Lost Ark and seeing how good combat can be, yeah, then I'm <laughs> like, dude, I feel like they need to step that up just a little bit. Yeah. Because Lost Ark feels so good. Yeah, especially like calling yourself like best in class combat. And yeah. You're not. I think Lost Ark's combat feels really good. Yeah. Uh, so. That's a great choice. Uh, that'd probably be my number two. I think, honestly, itemization... Uh, is the biggest like because itemization is what carries these carries these type of games and yeah to repeat Diablo 3's itemization is such a huge mistake. Um, yeah, I I can't say enough about how please like rework that system. I mean they can again, right? Like, are you, and, and what do you mean specifically? Like detail out a little bit yeah, of what you mean gosh, by itemization. Are you um, talking about ancients and primal ancients you're talking about all that the rune words you're I'm, talking about I'm, there are rune words is like it's it's new ish and i don't really have a problem with it um it's that whole system of diablo 3 where like literally crafting becomes obsolete and a meme uh blues yeah. and yellows become obsolete you don't even care about them 
you know, they talk about sets might be a stepping stone as well. So I, you know, I compare that to like, say you have Blackthorn and Vanilla and, um, you know, Blackthorn you could put on until you got something else and it would be like, okay. But the, the, even throwing that development time at Blackthorn was completely fucking worthless, right? Because it's right. not something you're ever going to use. And so that's what my fear is for Diablo 4. They'll have sets in the game, but it's like wasted development time basically because like your goal is to like basically rush through all that. So I don't I don't like stepping stone legendaries. Um, you know, ancients is obviously a huge concern. The mythics, like at least it's new, uh, but still kind of scary. And then if you look at itemization itself, like statting, it's attack and defense, which is the most simple system we've ever seen in a Diablo. Yeah. Um, right. With things like cooldown reduction, I think a lot of people really don't like cooldown reduction. It's very much Diablo three. Uh, you see, like fury cost or you know fury cost reduction is something we saw and. It's just like the the statting is 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 too simplistic. I think a lot of players wanted something more along the lines of a middle ground between Diablo three and and PUE, and it seems to be like even more dumbed down than than Diablo three, which is scary. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. You know, <laughs> we're pulling all this out of out a of the demo. demo. Yes, absolutely. Out of the what demo. else we so, got? Yeah. Of Take course. it with a grain of, a grain of salt because we know that this isn't the final product we're getting, but but. We do like these are the the top thing that you're like you know I, I'm taking the question is like what's the thing that you really hope is changed when you play the game right on release but and I also think that like so people are like oh it's too early right so I get that but at the same time like if we don't address how like it's a huge problem and we don't give like big feedback now like they're just gonna go forward with it and that's the system that we get yeah um, so that's that's why I'm really trying to drive home how it's just not yeah, good yeah. I agree this is just feedback yeah hundred you know? percent. Um, the next question comes from Demonic Grizz. He says, now that you have played the D4 demo out of the three <laughs> classes, what is your favorite class and why? Druid. I mean, we both agree Druid. on that. Druid. I yeah, think Druid just, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Druid just felt powerful. It felt like it was designed better. It was new because we hadn't played it in D3 yeah. for a billion hours. Um, it, it just felt decent. It felt fun. It yeah. felt good. Again. It had mobility. Yeah, it mobility was good. Power. It had, I mean, there was, you know, and I, and I think some of the other classes, like there was no teleport in the sorceress. Right. It had the skill, right. it just wasn't on the bar. Right. So um, if sorceress would have had teleport, maybe that mobility would have made me mm -hmm. feel really good mm -hmm. about it. But um, for what I played, Druid right. had all the things. It, hit, it checked off the boxes. Agreed. And two things, like I agree. So one like, yeah, the Druid felt the most fresh. And so, like, I think at the end of the day, our opinions are a bit skewed because the other ones felt like Diablo 3. Uh, two is, like, Druid got the best legendary in the game, uh, at least on the yeah. demo, uh, which you would shape shift yeah. and you'd call down lightning. And that, like, that was actually really, well, really cool. It, yeah, it was it was a cool legendary. It had yeah. the coolest effect. The, the, the Sorceress one was strong, mm, very noticeable when you got it. Too. Yeah, but it was really, like, I mean. It was bland. To shoot out I, three I, instead of one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it basically turned your fireball into multi shot. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Like, three fireballs. You know, it had like this yeah. spread cone effect. Mm -hmm. The druid one, what it did is when you shape shift into the bear form, it would call down a tornado. Lightning bolt. Light a lightning bolt yeah. thing. Yeah. And that was so good. Like the little storm. Yeah. It's like it was whatever it's called. Um. So it not only looked cool, but it felt powerful, and it it just like yeah. made the class feel even better. So, what did the barb get? I don't even remember. I only <laughs> I played uh, it, made, it a couple it times. It made Hoda, or not Hoda, sorry, a Seismic Slam. Seismic like, Slam. It made it burn like, the ground afterwards. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It yeah. did extra damage. Yeah. Yeah. That one was, like, not really noticeable as much to me. But yeah. We're so, like, we're so Seismic Slammed out of our mind. You know? Yeah. It was like, <laughs> like yeah. I was just too busy dagger stabbing everything in the face. Too. Yeah. Like, it was fun. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, definitely Druid to me. And, you know, we'll see. TFOS says, suggestions for a straw poll. Oh, probably should have done that either. But we'll go ahead and read it. It says, what classes would you think would be there at launch? No, um, we did that. So yeah. we kind of already hit that. Yeah. You know, we've, we've talked about the classes. Jiggity says, in D1, even trash mobs were dangerous. D2 to some extent as well. D3, trash is only a challenge if you pull in or if you're <coughs> in full push gear, uh, check mode with swarms of trash. The D4 trash mobs feel like any kind of a challenge. Is that a good direction for the game? Absolutely not. They were a complete joke, but I think the difficulty was scaled super low in the demo. demo. I think it's going to be more challenging at launch for sure. Um, yeah. They 
They talked about how they wanted to have the game have very low legendary drop rates. How they're going back to the dark gritty style, how they want you to be scared, how they want you to feel alone. I really feel like they're going to go to that vanilla D3 where the game was challenging mm. thing. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys remember D3 on, on launch week, but the game was actually tough. Like there were, you died, you know, unless you're hardcore going slow. Like Belial <sighs> fucked us up. Fuck me up. Sure. So, no, the trash was kind of a joke, um, but demo difficulty is always dumbed down. Yeah, so. for sure. I agree. Oh, agreed. Maester says, if Batman had to fight Jesus and Santa, could he take them both? Wow. Yep. <laughs> I mean, all I can say is Christian Bale is the greatest actor of our generation. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no. dare, inside joke. Yeah, and Fluff's brother joke. threatened to kill me because yeah. <laughs> I disagree. That Christian, Christian Bale. Bale wasn't the greatest actor of our generation. <laughs> That's my brother. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What happens if you fight <laughs> Jesus? It's like makes you. If you get in a fight with Jesus, you're probably not doing too hot in the grand scheme of life. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I would think. Yeah, good for you. Um, Onion says, "What made you think we weren't getting gameplay footage or a demo for D4 at this year's BlizzCon?" You know, in in retrospect, you know, there's so many things that really didn't make sense going into BlizzCon. Uh, like the Diablo 2 remastered, you know, we got no word on that. And it really didn't really make sense that we would. Um, I think like every leak ever pointed at that, though. Every yeah. leak ever was like D4. So all these guys that have all this credible history and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there you go. I, that one guy that was them, like, "Oh, you're getting D2 remastered this year." Like, he's he's less credible now. Like, obviously, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I had people that are like, you know, I, you know, I'm X Y Z and blah blah blah, and like they told me D2 remaster, right. you know. So, yeah, wise. I think we expected more. I at least I expected more, and I ended up losing a bet because of it. I expected more Diablo Immortal stuff, and I thought that that would take up a I got really time. nervous after we made that bet, like the following day. <laughs> like, so that was on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, I'm sitting there and I'm I'm playing Diablo three. I'm, uh, maybe no, it wasn't. I was watching. I think I was watching you and packing for BlizzCon, and I was just like talking to people and and I was I started being like, man, I'm fucked. I'm super <laughs> fucked. I'm gonna have to level this witch doctor, dude. I mm -hmm. got I got really nervous. I'm like, I should have bet five minutes of Immortal, not sixty seconds. Sure. You know, like, what if they show a gameplay trailer? That's going to be at least 60 seconds. I'm screwed, you know? <laughs> so whew, I dodged a bullet you on did. that one, man. You Damn you. So Fluff is going to have to hardcore level a witch doctor. We're already started. 270. Yeah. He's already started. He's already ripped once. I did in 20 seconds. He's on character number two. <laughs> He's Never like level 30, 36 or something, I, don't I think. I No. Is it 30 that something-ish. Yeah, yeah, you're 30 something. 30 something. So hopefully, you know, anything you can do in his stream to get him to rip, I I uh I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um Demonic Gris <laughs> says, what were your top three best moments at the con, excluding the reveal of Diablo 3? Mm. Mm hmm Uh, you know, honestly, for me, one of the big ones was like you know, uh, you know, some of the the guys were standing around, uh, like Mr. Lama, Quinn, and like Zazarian, and uh, you were you had mentioned you you had just walked off, and you're like, I'm gonna go to the Q and A, like that's about to happen. So like, I don't want to like, because we thought that there might be like a queue, and you might not get in and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And so you're like, I'm gonna go. Yeah, so definitely I, want to get. Yeah, in. yeah, I'm gonna go. So make sure I get in. And so Quinn, and then Quinn after that, the three left. He's like basically like, Are you gonna go? And I was like, Like you know, I wasn't invited, right? <laughs> Yeah. And so then like they're like, oh, but like you should be in there. Like, so like let's just let's just try to get you in. You know, and that like that's that's the kind of stuff that's like really cool and like the community, even though like, you know, maybe Blizzard doesn't want to extend the olive branch, like the community still has got like my back kind of thing. And that was really dope. Yeah, it is cool. Um, uh, my top three moments excluding the reveal. Um they're all community based, obviously. So um I got to uh, meet Zazarian, mm -hmm. um, Lama, and Quinn, and I got to 
Um, I got to sit down with those three and one of the D4 devs at a table and, and eat a meal and like hang out and just talk and shoot the shit. And like the ideas bouncing around between uh, the four of us was like phenomenal. Like that in itself was like super, super crazy awesome. Um, and then like Zazarian and Llama were super, super, you know, uh, nice, friendly people, which I kind of expected more cockiness out of, out of, especially out of Zazarian, just, he's just, just, you know, a really ridiculously big content or creator. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, good player. he was like, he does the race. Yeah. I mean, he was like super nice, man. Like one of the most chill people I met. Um, uh, Quinn cracked me up several times <laughs> during the convention just with like him being Quinn, like, yeah. like you know, I'm 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 when, like walking yeah. through, going to get some lunch, and like Quinn's like walking really fast, like just by, and he's just like comes over and he's like, "What's up? What's up, bro?" Like just just <laughs> Quinn, you know, and just starts a conversation, and we're in the middle of talking, and he's like, "Hold on, be right back," and boom, just gone like that. Yeah, and then like I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." And then, but like 10 minutes later, he's like, what's up, man? I'm back. You know, like right. he, he's just <laughs> so spaz. He's just like, yeah, he's all over the place, yeah. man. And it, it was pretty funny sure. um, just getting to meet him and see that he is exactly like he is sure. on stream in real life. So yeah. I got two other ones. Uh, I forgot. Okay. Uh, so one, and we talked on it earlier, but like getting to talk to the D3 guys, like for as long as we did, that was just fucking dope. Yep. Uh, and three, so I got to hang out with uh, Riker and uh uh quinn and uh seagull which is like kind of out of the blue and we played like this game where you like basically throw burritos at each other and uh i don't want to brag but uh i i had i had to face off against seagull in a burrito duel and i drop shot at him hard big time nailed it <laughs> so that you know that's that's one of the top five moments for sure yeah that's <laughs> awesome man yeah, so uh, I agree. So my number one was like, you know, that that um, session where we got to hang out. Um, uh, number two, probably on the list, or maybe even tie with number one, was hanging out with the D3 guys. Um, so we got to to hang out and, and chill in the Blizzard Arcade with mm -hmm. a lot of the D3 people, and I got some signed posters from those guys um, as part of my swag that I brought home. And uh, it was really cool, man, just to get insight on, like, like what's going on, how's the process work, what's up with the game, like, to put faces behind the people that are doing the stuff to the game and um, just to just say hi and, and meet them, you know. It was cool and just sure. talk and, and goof and joke around. So that was super awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. And then my my other one, it's just hanging out with so many. I mean, my last one is kind of a, a similar thing, but it was like I got to meet so many people from the community. Um, all all the streamers were there, so I have like little moments with pretty much every streamer where I took time and and uh, got to just you know have a conversation with them or hang out and do something or go yeah, to man. dinner or breakfast or lunch. So, still, that was my top moments. That's the that I made that the final question because I think that was kind of a cool yeah positive thing true. to end true true end on so we're at like two fifteen <laughs> yeah it's not bad for an hour long podcast and Only post BlizzCon podcast yeah. the it's juiciest not bad, podcast man. of the year yeah it's not bad so is there anything else that you wanted to hit anything we didn't talk about from no, BlizzCon man. uh. You know, make sure you guys follow us on social media as always. You know, especially I'm about to go to ExileCon. Um, and if you guys saw either of our feeds during BlizzCon, it was like, on yeah, all we like the news. Spitting out all the yeah. stuff, man. So if you guys want the it same kind of thing for ExileCon, like, just, you know, look into giving us a follow. Mm -hmm. You can just retweet my stuff since you won't be there. But mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what we should try to do for ExileCon? If, if you can get any kind of internet connection down there at all. Maybe I can just get you on and like, you know, we can uh, do like a Discord chat or something. Yeah, I'd have to be my phone. Time. I couldn't, I, I mean, I can't. I, oh, we're you doing don't a, have a laptop. I'm doing it on a motorcycle trip. You know what? Reach out to them and see like, hey, I'm traveling and I'm not going to have a laptop. Do you guys have a stream station that I could use during the con? Uh, I mean, I did already kind of reach out. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> they said no. Well, so, they said that they said like, thank you for reaching out. And like, we totally would have like 
being able to do something had you contacted us earlier but like it was kind of last minute and they're like we don't yeah. like we're literally we got nothing we got nothing for you dude yeah. that's cool well maybe maybe we can do some, maybe i can just get you in discord we can audio chat yeah. you know some we'll see but i, I can't it would, bring, it would be i would awesome. love yeah i would love to bring a laptop and like stream it and like have a yeah podcast it'd be awesome stuff. just to be able to talk to pick your brain because yeah. you're the you're the d3 or the poe expert sure uh, and, and it'd be interesting to see like your thoughts and opinions on, on what they drop and yeah. uh, graphical update has to be one. If they don't drop a graphical update, then they're fucked. Like there's no way, you know? Yeah. It's hard to imagine. Like, like I can't imagine it'd be like more acts or, <laughs> or if it's just like a ton of content drop, like that's still, it's exciting cause it's, it's PUE and like, that's what they do. And that's like really pod, but I don't, that's not, that doesn't warrant like 4.0 and, and doesn't warrant like GGG kind of being like, you know, basically really cocky about all this so yeah i yeah. Yeah. i just i don't even know what to expect i don't and it's the same thing like going into blizzcon i didn't really know what to expect either i i just really had no idea yeah <laughs> and we saw those posts or those, those signs go up and then i was like okay we're gonna get a cinematic but i i knew we were getting d4 like I, we had to like, oh I you knew ahead of, you knew ahead of time i didn't know you ahead, knew ahead of time, time. Quinn admitted, but, Quinn's been lying to us. Quinn admitted that he knew. He didn't know whether it was D4, but he knew, like, what we said in the podcast, we were totally right. Like, how he was like, I'm not coming out for Immortal. And they're like, right. it's not going to be Immortal. And they said, like, you want to come. You want you come. to be here. Yeah. And he's like, but I really don't want to. And they're like, like no, Quinn, you want to be, like, yeah. Like, be here. All right. <laughs> he's so. like, okay, okay, okay. Like, wink once if it's D4. And right. they're like, <laughs> <laughs> Come out, dude. Yeah. So that's all we got for the juice this week. Easy. We will be back next week for the, l- and then we got a couple week break. You're going for three weeks. Uh, let's see. So next week, how many be, podcasts are we? Missing? Yeah, I think we're only missing two. Uh, so two? we'll be here for the 12th. I'll be gone for the 19th. Yeah. I'll be here for the third. So just when we missed two. We missed two. When do you get back? Uh, the first. Okay. So you got a buffer day if you fly frontier to get fucked up. <laughs> You can't fly it international to Frontier, but yeah. Bro, you can't fly anywhere with Frontier. They get you, dude. <laughs> just you actually kidding. just Take can't fly, bus. period, with Frontier. Yeah, yeah, right? So, yeah. All right, guys. If you guys want to find more info on me or come check me out, I'm on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, everywhere, at the P Child. Yeah, yeah. And I'm Laura underscore Fluffy everywhere but the Twitters where you just double those underscores. We'll see you guys next week for episode 76, the final episode before ExileCon. Peace out, dudes. Peace out.